Well, greetings, my friends, wherever you are. I'm still one of the same person, <laughs> Alexander Sasha Velich, as you know me. And I have a very important announcement to make today, and I've been waiting purposefully for this very date. Namely, tomorrow, 16th of July, will be the fifth anniversary of uh, the library, which I founded here in East Europe, and it's called, its name that I gave was Hope of Israel. Now, why did I call it Hope of Israel? Well, it's from uh, from uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, when God of Israel is called Hope of Israel, or Hope of Israel. In original Hebrew, it's Mikveh Yisrael. Now, with Mikveh, you probably, those of you who know some Bible history would understand and will remember that even to these days, the Jewish people have a Mikveh, which is a ritual, ritual cleansing place. Uh, it's a place, it's um, uh, 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 like a pool, but it's not a pool that can be supplied with water from the usual water supply system. It's water which is gathered from heaven, basically, is the rainfall water. So uh, that's how the mikveh operate even today. Mikveh in the Jewish tradition even today is more important even than the synagogue because as I read in one commentary a synagogue service you can do at home but uh, uh, with mikveh uh, you know uh, synagogue service you can do at home but mikveh is something that just makes you kind of ritually cleansed and makes you kind of spiritually how shall i say better in the eyes of god something like that in any case before building synagogues usually jewish people first build mikveh and it's interesting that the word mikveh is translated by all of our translators in various languages as hope. Now that hope of Israel is the hope that uh, the Apostle Paul expounds in Romans 11 when he says that all the nations will be grafted into the uh, domestic uh, olive and all the, all the nations will be grafted into Israel and thus all the nations will become Israel, Israelites, and then all the nations will indeed, all Israel will be saved, the Apostle Paul says. Now, of course, you uh, now see me, you might remember those of you who listen to my messages, and somebody recently wrote to me, he says, you don't mention <laughs> certain church organization and certain personality anymore. It's true. I used to be an elder in Continuing Church of God when I was, I was ordained an elder there, on February the 9th, 2017, during the uh, conference in the capital of Kenya, Nairobi. And I used to mention once my good friend, Bob Thiel, as well, uh, from time to time. And you could hear me mention that in my messages. And still in the old recorded message, you can hear me mention those two things. But uh, I have to announce, and I have been waiting again purposefully for this this very uh, date, I have to announce that uh, no longer I'm associated with either the person I mentioned or the continued Church of God where I was ordained because I could not really, because of my conscience, I could no longer be there. Now, you might have heard various, various people have heard various uh, explanations, interpretations, uh, I'm currently trying, obviously, there are people who are trying to portray me as somebody who has no love for others, and so on and so forth. But uh, be it as it may, let me just give you a certain, let me just give you a certain review of some historical happenings and how I arrived to this. I arrived to this point, uh, first of all, because five years ago I found it, I've got a collection, I have got a collection of books, and that was like a home library and I was looking for a name of those, that library and I thought oh well I was an ambassador student and uh, I was the last generation of the, of the students that was admitted to that college when it was still when the church which ran it was still on the right track so to speak even though in secret and uh, far away from the public seems from sometimes from 19, 1980s they were working on subverting the church from within uh, what used to be worldwide church of god once uh, directed by herbert armstrong uh, over the after his death in 1986 
was went underwent certain first administrative changes, later doctrinal changes, and f I remember hearing from one of my fellow students that even back in 1987 they were already kind of trying to put um, trying to make some tests how people would react, so they would just release certain things that didn't seem to be according to the conservative church teaching and so on. So obviously the plan to subvert the Worldwide Church of God was a long-term project. And I happened to be a student when uh, it kind of was reaching its peak in 1995. In 1995 already, we're well, already in the fall of 1994, uh, all the ambassador uh, staff and uh, that meaning our lecturers, instructors, and so on. All the ambassador college staff was required to listen to Stavrinidis, uh, Stavrinidis teachings on Trinity, because God was not, God was, as we always know, that God is not Trinity anyway, he's a family, but nevertheless, uh, that was the basic doctrine, the first doctrine that just uh, had a very massive and deep changes. Later I learned that uh, Vatican, at his Vatican's uh, Second Council or whatever, declared that uh, there is one common thing uh, that all Christians have, and that's belief in Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all those who do not believe in Trinity cannot be counted as Christians. They're just the fringe, fringe cults, whatever. So uh, then I understood why the first very doctrine to be attacked, if you wish, is a doctrine that God is a family, divine family, into which countless millions, billions, countless number of people can be born, born again, and become part of that family. That was the first very fundamental doctrine being uh, attacked while I was still an ambassador. And in fact, I worked in ambassador library. So I remember as I was, as people were coming, coming up various faculty members, and uh, they were just uh, they were just a set of, of, of videotapes at that time, and uh, and uh, they would just check out those tapes because they were required to go through through all that doctrine and to understand it. Now I understand why. That was all the preparation for the former Worldwide Church of God to join the uh, ecumenical movement in America. Eventually they did. They changed the name. They just dismantled the church name, and they just changed the name into something else and uh, those people are alive <laughs> kicking alive even today recently i ran across one of their article transformed by the truth not article but uh, a video programs transformed by the truth or something like that in which all of them are talking about their transformation their uh, accepting the grace rather than the law and all of that other rubbish that we can just hear from the from the uh non-biblical Christians, from the false Christians indeed. Now, uh, I was an ambassador student, I was a very young believer at that time, but I organized back in 1995 with the help of one of my friends, but mostly it was my initiative, I organized the student underground and uh, I've got certain memories of that time and uh, won't spend much time to tell you about those. By the way, I don't have any, any notes. I've I thought I'll give this inaugural speech, just just from my heart, just as I as I feel inspired and led to tell you, because uh, so many things are happening and have happened in my life, and as I said in my 38 years of my Christian life, my strive my my, my strive to live Christian life. So many things happened happened to me because I come from a country that was war torn. I was born in former Yugoslavia. Then I returned in a country that was completely different. In And there are still struggles even to this day in this country because we have a breakaway breakaway province that wants to separate and, uh, and, 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 and uh, basically expel the remaining Serbian population from, it's called Kosovo, from, from, from its northern part mostly. So uh, I have a very rich and dynamic life uh, because of the country in which I was born, also because of the history of my nation, even though I consider myself Israelite, and there are plenty of Israelites present in the South Slavic nations, in the nations of former Yugoslavia, that's another story. 
so uh, I basically made an underground student underground and uh, that was an interesting thing and I was known for a while among people as somebody who organized student underground and uh, that I was I was in fact uh, even I think I was on the list to be even disfellowshipped by the main leader of the apostate WCG but uh, as far as if that story true the then president of ambassador college prevented it so uh, we still stayed and I still stayed there until the end of 1990 basically of the 1995 and then I just left the college and didn't return I was I finished just my third year I was offered by the administration to stay for the fourth year but my dear brethren I could not imagine staying at a college that would celebrate Christmas Easter Halloween and be a completely different place from the one that I came to attend because I grew up in a country where Bible is not uh, a, a book that every house has I grew up in a nation that is biblically completely illiterate a nation that is immersed deeply into superstitions into uh, a very devout to established religion it was used to be a communist a communist uh, society at one point and then after the fall of the communism all of a sudden the established church in this case was the Serbian Orthodox Church or as people usually know it in the West Greek Orthodox Church all of a sudden that church became dominant people became all of a sudden religious all of a sudden devout to all kinds of saints and all kinds of customs that have nothing to do with the Bible many people here haven't even read in the New Testament not even one gospel let alone anything from the Bible but they're just very devout to their system of to their system of uh, uh, customs to their various rituals and rites because they think if they don't fulfill them they're going to be punished by God so the view of God you know in this in the mind of this nation is uh, as a punishing a punishing being somewhere there waiting just that you make certain mistake and then he's going to snap you slap you uh, or whatever he's going to f you know uh, take you from the face of the earth and that's it in any case uh, when I was in England my uh, my aunt my aunt was a very good Christian example she was WCG member at that time so when I started living with her at the end of 1991 I gradually began to see that wonderful shining example of hers and uh, she happened to have a copy of a Serbian Bible so I began reading the Bible back then then I applied next year for the college I got baptized on 10th of March 1992 uh, and I was uh, the hands were uh, were were, were uh, put on me uh, uh, there was the uh, laying on of hands happened in the interesting enough it was in the library of the British office of worldwide Church of God it was a nice big big building there was a library so the a couple of ministers laid hands on me in that very library one of them was a Scottish of Scottish origin the other one was a young American who happened to come to England and to be of help to the youth youth in the local congregation I used to attend Watford congregation basically made many friends there and so on and I've got many fond memories of that time uh, that congregation along with all the others in England lately uh, lately well later they basically went went away along with this apostasy in America even though for a long time just to keep people confused or not to just uh, allow them to have a proper discernment for a long time uh, the worldwide Church of God in Britain retained that name it was the last region in the world which changed the name to uh, what is today uh, the name of that denomination in any case I was admitted to the college I was the last one to basically land in Dallas I was met by my friend Jason from Gibraltar and uh, he, uh, we remained friends of course uh, after my, my arrival I was the last student to come I came just before the uh, reception night at college uh, yes I met the uh, the main man 
who led that apostasy, uh, Joseph Karch Sr., but uh, that was not the first time that I met him. I met him later on one, sometimes I think in 1994, summer 94, as he just appeared on on a boat as we as students. It was a summer and we were, we were around the Lake Loma, an ambassador, and all of a sudden he just appeared with somebody else and... Uh, and I happened to uh, <laughs> happened to meet him, and even took had a picture of him and me, which I destroyed later. I remember that uh, I, I introduced myself. I said I come from from Serbia and that from a Slavic Slavic people land and so on. And I remember he asked me about the um, how do we say in Serbian slippers, <laughs> because the uh, there is a similar very similar word in Russian for for the same for the same item so uh, that was it that was our brief exchange and uh, oh yes and as, as at the reception night when I introduced myself to him I said that I came from Serbia and so on he shook my hand and that was about it later on there were a couple of guys who were of Croatian origin who are uh, from were born in Canada from Croatian parents and so on so uh, I, I became friends with them and as well as with many others so my first my first year in ambassador college was really a paradise compared to the what was happening back then in the Balkans. There was a bloody civil war being developed, which really was very disruptive for me because I never hated any Yugoslav nation anyway, and I myself have got very mixed origin. So uh, that was it. So in 1995, when the falling away started, I just uh, moved away, and I moved to El Salvador along with my one of my uh, uh, friends uh, from that country with Kati uh, Monti and our friend from uh, from Honduras who was of Jewish origin uh, Hagit also was, was there with us so Kati's father uh, bought uh, a pickup he came and picked the three of us and we went to Salvador I had a very interesting experiences in Salvador. I was an English teacher at the Academy of uh, European Languages. It was a private academy, but it was very, very interesting. Among my students, I had, for example, a candidate for the Supreme Court of Salvador, <laughs> the late Alfredo Nieto, a wonderful gentleman. He told me, oh, I didn't accept that. He said, I didn't accept that position. Why didn't you, Alfredo? Well, it's because he said, I don't want to be... I don't want to be a, a president of Supreme Court in a country with this corrupted government. <laughs> and so on. So I met very interesting people as well during my, uh, during my service there. Uh, there is one anecdote uh, that on one of the main, that my impact was so big that one of the main uh, Salvadorian traffic routes, somebody placed, somebody put a big, banner saying the uh, the teachings of Sasha the Protestant are not true it was in Spanish of course written I've just I've only heard I've only heard that I'm not sure it's a rumor or it's true but it might be anyway so my impact was not small there was a small church in Salvador there at that time I'm not sure what remained of it anyway uh, I, I would have to frequently go to neighboring Guatemala as well because I had to renew my visa every third month, my entry visa had to be renewed. But to renew it as you're a foreigner, you have to go outside the country, get into their consulate, you know, get another three months permit to cut in. You just cook, then you come back. And then every third month, that's 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 the procedure. Uh, I was waiting basically in Latin America to see the end of the war in the Balkans. In 1996, it happened. The uh, so-called Dayton Agreement was signed between the warring factions in former Yugoslavia. That was formally the end of the of the war. Sometimes, I think, it happened sometimes in May or June of 1996. And then on 16th of July, that will be tomorrow. I returned after five years of being absent from the. Uh, from the Serbian society for former Yugoslavia. I could only through a shortwave band radio, I could only keep in touch with what was going on here, but uh, that was about as much as I had. Uh, for five years, I lived in totally foreign cultures. Uh, 
basically far away from my native language, far away from the culture, far, far away from what happened to the people. On 16th of July 1996, I returned to Serbia, uh, now Serbia, and uh, there were no church members there, never church there, and I was basically on my on my own because I, with my immediate family, I didn't have any, I wasn't in touch anymore because of religion and other things. So uh, I found refuge with my friend, one of my friends from my teenage years and his family. So uh, it's another exciting <laughs> and tragic story, but uh, I would rather just not bother you with that. So I was the only church member who basically returned, returned here. In the meantime, there was a famous Indianapolis conference when uh, uh, United Church of God was formed. And uh, I was still at the college when that happened in May. May of 1996, I think, yes, and then uh, a later Salvadorian congregation decided to go with United Church of God and so on and so forth, and then later then came more and more other splits and differences and so on. That's, that's something that's not really interesting because the splits and the fragmentation and fracture of the, of the body of Christ has been going on now for 30 years. Uh, ever since the the, uh, the death of Herbert Armstrong and demise of and the demise of the old worldwide church of God. In any case, I still thought that it was my duty to God to return favor because uh, it was nothing short of miraculous how I basically was called while in England, how I was admitted to college. Uh, with the help of various people of goodwill, I have to admit, uh, especially with the help of people of WCG office back in those days. And then uh, I returned, and then I thought that the gospel, the, the, the gospel message was never published in my native tongue. Uh, and I remember that I think the first booklets I began to translate was The Mark of the Beast. <laughs> I thought that would be coming. And yes, that Jesus Christ did not, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was not on Sunday. Because with that booklet, you need to understand the official, the established church in this country, as well as everywhere else, keeps teaching that Christ rose on Sunday, and that's the reason why they keep Sunday. You could hear that, so I just tried to debunk that by by these two booklets. Um, Beast, the mark, the mark of the beast, and the beast itself was also my one of my uh, main topics that I paid attention to. In the meantime, I changed about uh, from UCG, then I moved because of their at that time problem literature. Sometimes I was even lied to, you know, they would say, one of their officials would say that they sent me something. Perhaps they did, but that what they sent me to translate never reached me. I always tried to ask the church that I was in, whatever denomination I was asking, that I would be, if I could be a translator. And I always said to them, uh, but nobody seemed to understand me, you know. Uh, I said if they could pay me some small amount of money that could just keep me going, I don't need too much that could just keep me going here, here in Serbia, because that was the only way to get employment. Uh, many of you do not understand the gentle societies and how gentle societies work, because many of you, brethren, were not born in a gentle society. You cannot fathom that the party which has holds power at certain at current moment is the main party who is the main employer. It doesn't certainly. It just. It probably your heads are swinging. How come? Well, that's the gentle society. So if a certain party comes into power, it's going to employ its own, its own members everywhere. That's the way how it is being done. Now I'm a librarian by profession. That's true. But uh, all the libraries are public offices. And all the public offices will be filled with the cadres, with the candidates, with members of the ruling party. Brethren, that's how it's run in a gentle society. It's nothing like in yours. Then I had a problem to explain to people various things in gentle societies. 
in a gentle society, some of them, you don't have a part-time job. You cannot get a part-time job. In a gentle society, you can be fired just because you keep the Sabbath. They don't care. They don't care whether it's a public office or a private business. They don't care that you keep the Sabbath and holidays, brethren. They couldn't care less. And there is nobody that you can appeal to. Yes, yes, formally, of course, but understand this. Freedom in gentle society is just a matter of formality, you know. It's just a matter of formality and nothing else. It's just on paper. It's a dead letter on paper. So, if you keep holidays and, and, and Sabbath, they don't care. Oh, they don't care if you're going to die from starvation, if not, if not being employed. They couldn't care less. It's a Gentile society. Gentile mind doesn't care about life and sanctity of life. Gentle society doesn't care about animals, doesn't care about anything that is not useful for their selfish interests. And so, therefore, you could easily stay without, without work. Let me tell you one thing. I'll give you an example. There used to be, a long time ago, a, a, a magazine here in Serbia dedicated to mobile phones and all of these modern gadgets. And they needed a proofreader. So there was a public announcement that we need a proofreader and so on. So I went. Because, you know, I'm a good writer, I, I have a very good command of Serbian language, and so on. And the interview, the, the, the person who interviewed me was, was thrilled. Even though I said I had certain religious beliefs, he was still thrilled, you know, and could you work on the Good Friday? I said, yes, I could, it doesn't bother me. I could work on Good Friday as a whole day, because in, in this country, Good Friday is a bank holiday. Nobody wants to work. And plus, there are so many other things. Oh, and I said, and I explained to him about sunset to sunset, about the Sabbath, and I said that even on, even on the, on the so-called big Saturday, I could work at night and so on. And he seemed to be okay with that. And we parted. So soon after, I, you know, several days have had passed, and I said, uh, "What about employment? I'm going to tell you word for word the response I get." The response was, your principal determination to keep the Sabbath prevents you from being employed. Now, if you received a letter like that in America or in England or in Australia, you could appeal to higher authorities and say, this is a violation of my religious rights. Now, in a gentle society, we don't have anybody to appeal to, you know. And I always had a hard time to explain to the rest of you, especially to Americans, that the world is simply not like what you are used to. You're used to your system, which is wonderful. It has a wonderful freedoms. So you have somebody to appeal to. It has a sense of justice. It has respect for the sanctity of life. Not in a Gentile world. Please get it. Get it once and for all. But I always had a problem to explain to these people. Even to those who are supposed to be my brethren. That I'm not able to get employment because I'm not part of a political party. Because I'm not part of a political system. Or because I keep the Sabbath and holidays. As simple as that. I had the problem to explain to them about the, 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 the students and student life. No, we don't have ABC here in Serbia. You have a book that you have to read, or two books, or three books. And then you go to exam, which is oral exam, by the way. So you go, and then from a bowl, you pick up an answer one, answer two, answer three, and then you give oral response. Written exams are very rare in Serbia, very, very rare. Now you try, because somebody, we were even accused, because in the meantime there were some believers that came uh, as a result of preaching the gospel, of my efforts to preach the gospel indeed in Serbian language. Some people came, but they were young people, they were just students, and we were, you know, I was asked by somebody in England, uh, oh, uh, you know, why don't you get part-time employment? And I just, I just went over the, I don't know, over the moon, over the top of my, uh, efforts to explain to the person, I said, first of all, time, part-time jobs do not exist in this country. Oh. Brethren, part-time jobs do not exist in much in the world. Get it. 
So you cannot get part-time job because they wouldn't give it to give it to you. In fact, even if you're employed, very often the employers are going to abuse what? Their power. How? By making you work over time and not paying you. Oh, are you shocked? How come? Yes, it's 21st century. It's in a gentle world. It's possible. We have that all over Serbia all the time. You have an employer calling you at 10 p.m. Could you imagine? Employer calling you at 10 p.m. in America, in Britain, in, in Australia, in New Zealand. No, you cannot. Of course you cannot. Because you're not a gentle society. But in a gentle society, that's possible. And if you can say, I don't want to work on the Sabbath, oh, don't worry, you'll be laid off. There are plenty of people who need work anyway. That's how the response that people get here. Students, part-time job, until a few years ago, it didn't exist here. It does not exist. No part-time jobs. And then when that person who was supposed to be a pastor came once, I said to these young students, I said, please bring to him all of the textbooks that you have to read before one exam. Just bring him and show him the amount of literature you have to read. So even if you're employed, you cannot be employed because you have to read that amount of literature. In any case, what I'm trying, my point is, brethren, I understand the different Different countries, different cultures, different mentalities, I do understand. But keep in mind, keep in mind, Israelis, there is one main difference that exists in this world. On one, ha on one hand, it is Israelitish mindset. And much of the laws of Israel, by the way, the laws of the Bible, have been retained to one degree or another in your Israelitish societies. You would be surprised to hear that I've heard what I heard in England. They've got some kind of blue laws or something like that. You know what it says in the blue laws? That Sabbath is the day of rest. Would you believe that? Yeah. Respect for sanctity of life. Just to name that one. Let's keep with sanctity of life. When the Supreme Court ruled in America that abortion was no longer legal, you should, have, you should have heard the outcry in this Serbian gentle society. Violation of women's rights, this, that, and the other. Yes. Former Yugoslavia had abortion, my dear friends, long before you in America even had it. And Serbia just continued. And while if you ask any American, what is the greatest sin of American nation, everybody will jump and say, abortion! Here, they don't even know what is sin. To them, sin is if you don't do some superstitious stupidity. It's sin. If you don't dye eggs for Easter, if you don't, I don't know, do this, if you don't go to this, if you don't go to uh, liturgy on Sunday, if you, they have no clue what is even sin. They're totally literally. If in America, if I tell you Isaac, Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know whom I'm talking about. In this country, I have to explain first who is Abraham, who is Isaac, and who is Jacob before I can teach anything else. Like the house of Israel. Like the law of Israel. Like the God of Israel, after all. Brethren, please, those of you who are in the West, particularly in Israel, these nations, please understand. Please understand the Gentile mindset does not does not facilitate to, 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 to lie, to deceive, to do. That's what, sadly, our former affiliation, Continued Church of God, did not get. People in the Gentile world, and Africa is in the Gentile world completely, they, to gain for financial grade, they would just lie to you. They would just lie to your face. And keep in mind always, there is one main difference in this world. It's called Israelitish mindset on one hand, and gentle mindset on the other. And things are different. It's far more difficult to keep the commandments of God in a gentle society. It's far more challenging to live in a gentle society and be a true Christian. Far more challenging, trust me, because I live in a gentle society and I've lived it here in this society for 
almost all my life, except for that gap when I would be in an Israelite society. And you know, you know what is, somebody would say, oh, why do you think it's going to be so horrible for America and Britain in the Great Tribulation? How can you say that? Well, don't you see one of my, one of my relatives said, but you know, those societies are much different than ours. Uh, how can you say, well, I said, cousin, you're missing one thing. I said, you, cousin, don't know. Now he does because he learned from me, but anyway. He, I said, you don't know what is the true day of rest, Christian rest. You have no clue about the Christian, true Christian holidays. You have no clue about the dietary laws. But I said, cousin, the Western world, the Anglo-Saxon world does know it because they were dedicated individuals like Strong's Concordance. Could you believe writing a Strong's Concordance or any other concordance or any other Bible help book? Do you know how much research is needed for that? Do you know how much effort it is to write even a small book, friends? I've written several, so I know. Do you know? And those people dedicated some of them their lives to tell you what is the Christian day of rest, what is the Christian, what are the Christian holidays, what are the dietary laws. In Serbian gentle culture, none. We have no such authors. No, we don't. And even the Protestant Church, the Adventists who keep the Sabbath, along with the Sabbath, they've got plenty of other Protestant teachings that have nothing to do with the Bible. So we've got thousands of our kinsmen, about 12,000 at least, if not more, who just imbibed. Oh, they heard Sabbath was the, the true day of rest, okay. So they naturally looked for the church that keeps the Sabbath, and they, since the since the Adventists are here known as Sabbath keepers all over the country, then they just flocked into the Adventist church, but along with the Sabbath, they were taught all kinds of other things. Unlike this gentle society, brand friends, you know what is the Sabbath. All of you in the West, especially in Anglo-Saxon world, know, you know what is a true day of rest. You call it Sabbath, interestingly enough. You know what is the true holidays, more or less. You know the dietary laws. Oh, yes, you do know it. Because you're Israelites and because that has retained, has been retained in your psyche somewhere. It's somewhere in your awareness. That's what makes you different from the rest of the world. In your laws, you still have sanctity of life. I remember when I was reading the statute of the London police. <laughs> oh my. If a policeman has a, a founded doubt, a founded uh, suspicion, a suspicion that there is an animal being abused in a, in a premise, whatever premise, that same policeman has right to break into your house. What a level of awareness, you know. What a what a respect for the sanctity of all life. Here in gentle society. He, he, he loves animals. <laughs> what a fool. What an idiot. He loves cats. He loves dogs. He he feeds he feeds those poor stray cats and dogs. The country is full of stray cats and dogs. Do you read? Can you imagine that? No, you cannot. Because you cannot imagine yourself walking down down the streets, your lovely American little town or English little town or Australian little town without, you know, stray. And then all of a sudden you see stray, you, have, you see a whole litter because somebody threw away a whole litter of cats or dogs. Brethren, you cannot imagine that. But that's a common place here in Gentile world. You know? The difference, I'm trying to tell you the difference between the mindsets. Anyway. Anyhow, in 2016, 2016, we joined Continuing Church of God. Uh, we, had, we had one person who is no longer with us, thankfully, because his character is awful. And he is just full of, full of himself and, 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 and so proud and haughty. But anyway, he was uh, all, all of a sudden uh, uh, lobbying for Bob Thiel and lobbying for Bob Thiel and Bob Thiel and Bob Thiel and, and this, that and the other. And uh, it happened, I can't remember that, but Bob Thiel does, uh, that he some time ago sent me a question to which I responded very quickly and he was really thankful for that. I can't even re remember that, but anyway, so I just... Uh, 
read one of the Bob Thiel's sermons about the Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, about the man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, that made sense. And then I just then wrote a nice message to him. I said, uh, uh, we're studying your, 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 your materials. And then he began trying to convince me to join to continue Church of God. Why don't you join? I said, uh, there is one thing I said that just puts me off, and that's the hierarchical government. Because I've got very bad experience with hierarchy, and the men on the top of the hierarchy who have betrayed me, lied to me, abused me, and in one case marginalized me, and, 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 and uh, just because I was obviously a threat to something. I don't know what was I threat to. Perhaps I'm a threat to them because I think with my own mind, because I'm because I, I, I I'm not, you know, I, I can't stand that communist type of behavior, you know, we just issue orders and you just follow orders. That's how some people understand the government of God. And I'll come back to the government of God because I'm already a bit sick and tired of of of, of, of the totally unfounded accusations that Hope of Israel does not have a Philadelphian uh, form of the government of God. Total lie, we do. And sadly to uh, many of many of you, and to cause you to laugh, I, I happen to be on the top of that <laughs> hierarchy, even though that wasn't my choice. But anyway, the, the how things developed, just it just happened to be that way. So, uh, and then Bob Till said to me, but you know, it's not, it's not how it used to be. You know, the, the, the government of God was to be applied totally differently from what it was in the past. So you don't have to worry about that, is that and the other. Okay. So I fasted one, one night and one day and I prayed and uh, I said, okay, all right. I thought I never wanted to be an independent Christian. Brethren, I don't understand what it is an independent Christian. I was, we always have to depend on God and God alone. We also have to depend on Jesus Christ, so I cannot be independent. And yes, if God structured his church uh, in a Philadelphian style, then obviously some of us have to be part of that hierarchy, and the rest of us have to be ruled by that hierarchy. I'm okay. I'm okay with that, but I'm not okay with how that hierarchy is being abused. And it has been abused even to this day. So anyway... Uh, basically, 2016, sometimes it was about February, I think, uh, I I just fasted and prayed, I, uh, and then uh, had a meeting with a couple of, couple of members who were very keen to become part of Continuing Church of God, male and female, uh, and uh, people very carnal in this way. In any way, they later, of course, dropped out of the church, which is okay. But nevertheless, I just, without any announcement, the following s Sabbath, with all the people who were in the call, and by the way, we have been using Skype, and we have been using modern technology to serve God all along, much before we uh, even were part of Continuing Church of God. And uh, uh, if they, if their members are honest, they could, they could, uh, they would have to confess to you that I was the one who introduced them to Skype. And I was the one who just showed them how to use Skype. And I was the one who was collecting them, being scattered from everywhere, from North Ireland to Australia. I was the one who tried to integrate Africa into Skype calling. Never never worked, of course, because they always oh, they always tell you, beloved, yes, beloved brother, with their smile and stuff, they never do anything. Anything, 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 anything. But if you just tell them you can send them some money, oh, then they're just keenly interested especially those in Kenya. We've had very good relation we've had very good experience with Kenya and I'm very glad for that. We've we'll learned so much. Anyway, I just announced the to the attendees that from this time on will be continued Church of God and uh, I said I'm not going to take any vote on that. I'm not going to ask you what you think about it. I'm just announcing this to you. So I just uh, you might say uh displayed, if you wish, a Philadelphian government. No voting, nothing, and uh, anyway, everybody just agreed to stay. And that's how, as a congregation, Serbian congregation, we went, became part of the, of the, uh, of CCOG. Uh, I won't say anything bad about uh, uh, either its overseer or whatever. He used to be my friend. I used to really 
work with him and uh, I, I was in a faithful service to CCOG for seven years and I did my best to be an obedient part of the government of God. Little did I realize that I would become a part of that hierarchy because shortly after my after our uh, joining, I think it was in August August 2016, uh, Bob Phil called through Skype, interestingly enough, and he, he asked me if I was willing to go to Africa. Now, it happened that those days, uh, uh, constantly, when it comes to CCOG, there was constantly Africa was the main center of attention. So, uh, there were these various lovely reports from Africa and so on. And I thought, oh, how interesting it would be. How would it be if uh, if I if I happened to be in Africa? How would that look like? Oh, well, it didn't take too long for me to discover that I... Uh, uh, when the call came in and the offer, the whole congregation was just about on the Sabbath, the Sabbath meeting. So the whole congregation heard when I was offered and I enthusiastically accepted to go to Africa, thinking that that would be a very good and nice experience. Uh, when I was in Africa, uh, I've only noticed while there that there were some, first of all, I grew up in a gentle society, so you cannot fool me with Gentile tricks. That's number one. I noticed already that I was tricks. I was constantly trying to be, well, they were trying to impress me with the numbers, you know. I spent uh, much time because we traveled around the country to various uh, remote congregations. And I went, I was, I was sent to Kenya with, uh, with the mission to strengthen them in the, in the teachings of the Bible, and also I went there uh, with the mission that uh, overseer Bob Thiel told me that to see what they might need. Well, I'm telling you, perhaps, well, it's interesting for you to for all you to know all of this because just to see that my uh, heart was in the work and I was not really, as they're trying to portray me now, a bad pe person who has no love for. I knew there were certain health risks and hazards if I go to Africa, but I just uh, I just prayed to God that I went. Regardless, I'm now being portrayed as I have no love. Could you believe I have no love for the brethren? That's 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 the uh, image they're trying to spread about me now, my former those who called me brother until recently. They're trying to spread that image of me, but that's fine. That's fine because they're just they cannot be more wrong anyway. And uh, I wish if they endured and experienced half of what I, as a Christian, had to endure and and survive. But anyway. So I went to Africa anyhow, and I noticed, however, I noticed that some of those congregations had a different name. It wasn't continued Church of God. It would be like Church of God, Seventh-day Jerusalem. In the uh, address of the main person in, 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 in Kenya and Africa, uh, I don't have to mention his name, uh, but in any way, in, 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 his, uh, in his address, he would mention that the, the soon... They'll be have cemented floors, uh, roof sheets were coming and all of that. Okay, I noticed that. All right. Then I thought, oh well, I wonder how many, how much of the truth these people understand. I could never really know that. I only noticed that in every congregation, of all the hymnal that we have, uh, there was always hymnal num hymn number one was being sang in all. Because the leading man will start blessed and happy, and then others will follow follow that. And I wondered, because they were all in association with with CCOG longer before I, I thought, isn't that possible they didn't learn any more of the of the hymnal? So uh, you know, there was this constantly this impression that was trying to be forced upon me how. Um, wonderful the work is it's growing in Africa it's so numerous and uh, the main man Evan Soching is basically dying dying serving all of those people okay but you know I'm not impressed with numbers brethren and hope of Israel will never be impressed with numbers because I follow what Mr. Armstrong told us once I follow what Mr. Armstrong told us once and uh, it showed to be true in on various occasions in my life every time people deal with the with the with the numbers it's the a recipe for disaster 
you know how many how many people would respond how many people would join how how much income can we have how many uh if we put this ad up you know how many uh, subscriptions we would get how many this how many this. every time you deal with numbers brethren it's recipe for disaster so i'm not into the numbers and hope of israel will never be into the numbers anyway in the meantime some five years ago that will be about 2017 so sometimes before i return when i return from africa and so on i just uh later two years later i'll go to manipur that was a lovely experience i i'm i'm so i was so happy with those people who were dropped by one of the main churches and falsely accused of being of being uh pentecostal nothing pentecostal is there uh and there were all kinds of things that these big, oh, these big organized churches, hierarchical, do friends, brethren that are just. I sometimes wonder how much of that is the self initiative of certain local ministers, pastors, whatever, and how much of that is a church policy. I don't know. But one of the stupidity, for example, you know, a, a man, a man in Manipur was denied, denied baptism because he never attended, he never attended. A feast of tabernacles for example so the requirements for attending the baptism was to have a perfect sabbath record and attendance of 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 of, of feast of tabernacles well how can you attend the feast of tabernacles if you don't even know what is a feast of tabernacles plus this young man came from the neighboring country myanmar or former burma and he was a baptist he didn't know he just learned he just learned while in Manipur, he learned about Sabbath, and then he would begin learning about the so. So how could he, uh, how could he, fulfill requirement to attend the feast, you know, uh, before being baptized? It doesn't make any sense. And when it comes to baptism, really, it doesn't make any sense what some people do. Mr. Armstrong was very clear. Mr. Armstrong would even brethren, to your shock now. Mr. Armstrong would even baptize people who were smokers still, people who ate pork. He would he would baptize them when he, as soon as he saw their willingness to be taught and change. Because he always had this logic. They first get baptized, and then after that comes the teachings that change them. That, 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 that's recorded. Brethren, I have it, I have it in, in all the various materials that I've saved from Ambassador College. They have downloaded from internet, and I'm very thankful to our friend Craig White from Australia, who is who has gone uh, who has gone to a certain huge lengths in order to gather all the written material from history of WCG, from uh, anything that you might think about teaching tools, uh, magazines, whatever. He himself used to publish Origin of Nations, and I've kept all of those magazines. It's all online. You can just find it. It's precious material. And we've been friends. We met last year finally, because I was there for the feast, sent for the Feast of Tabernacles, and we met there. And that's another episode that is very worthy of all of this. So in the meantime, I changed. I had a collection of books, and I thought, well. I'm going to have this private library. How shall I name it? I'm like, well, Hope of Israel, of course. <laughs> Just remember Jeremiah 17. I was like, yes, indeed, Hope of Israel. Because Hope of Israel is hope of all the nations. All the nations will be grafted into Israel. Oh, sorry about those of you who think it's a racist. Oh, really? Tell God that he's a racist. Why would he have a model nation? Because he decided to have a role model nation. Because look how people behave today. They just follow their role models. They're, they're actors, they're singers, all kinds of stupidities, fashion fads, whatever comes out on TV. They worship TV, they worship cars, they worship appliances. Why did God have a role model? Because role model is somebody you can follow. And just like I had my good role model, my aunt, Matilda, why wouldn't anybody else have a good role model anyway? So God decided to have a role model and he had it. Or that is his will was to have it, but the role model constantly wanted to be pagans. You know, House of Israel constantly was backsliding to be pagans. When they entered into the promised land, they became even worse. Because until then, we have no incident of them sacrificing children to their god Baal. All of a sudden, once they entered into the promised land, God told them, do not inquire how those nations serve their gods. Because, no, do not do that. And do not say, we shall follow 
we should follow their role model. No, do not say that, but no, Israel would just, Israel was always smarter than God, under quotation mark. No, Israel just went and whored with all those other gods, and all, what happened then? What happened is what it says in Leviticus 26, the pivotal Old Testament prophecy. Based on that prophecy, all the prophets, brethren, all the prophets warned the house of Judah and house of Israel that God was going to punish them. And they're still warning. We are still warning you here in the house of in the hope of Israel that God is going to punish you. Israel after flesh. He is going to punish you because he gave you laws. Here you have certain awareness that other Gentiles do not have. He's going to punish you worse than any other nation. You're going to lose your lands. You're going to lose your freedom. You're going to lose everything. And neo-Nazi Europe is rising, brethren. Oh yeah, oh no, Germans to do that. Yes, Germans, exactly. Their national character has not changed. They're the ruling head and Volk. They're the master race in their mind. And you have offended them, you Anglo-Saxons in particular. Because you defeated them in two world wars. Oh. Oh. Haven't they forgiven us? No, they have not. No, they have not. They're just waiting. And look what they're doing now. And I said, oh, how many times are they in Serbian before the hope of Israel? I said, brethren, Britain is going to leave United, uh, United Europe. For years I preached that on the, over the social networks in Serbian. And then when Britain finally left, one of my cousins, one of my cousins wrote to me, cousin, I'm the first one who didn't trust you, but now I see you were right. My response to him was, cousin, it's not I. The Bible has been all the Bible has been right all that all along. I learned it from the Bible. Because why? Because I know the identity of Great Britain. And I knew that they would read through Gentile mind of Germans and German intentions. And I knew they would leave. And Mr. Armstrong preached about that much before I did, brethren. What I, uh, something else I said to the, in Serbian. As soon as they leave, friends and relatives, somebody's going to open a drawer and there will be another shock. Plan for European army. Because Britain was the only country in European Union preventing European army from coming into the place. But I said, you'll see, as soon as they get, as the Germans, as soon as, oh, supposedly they were just so sad. Oh, Britain is leaving our European family. Our, oh, rubbish. Rubbish and hypocrisy. As soon as Britain left, exactly what happened was the drawers open and here comes the German defense ministry. A plan for, guess what? European European army. Oh, there we go. And that's exactly how they fool your American administration. Oh, they come and say, we are your ally. We are your most trusting ally in Europe. You know, we denazified. Oh, no, no, Nazi. It's a past. Don't worry. No, 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 no. It's behind us. We will there. We are there in Europe to... Carry out your, your interests and defend your interests, oh great America. And of course, of course, silly doves Americans always fall for their, always fall for their, for their, for their, for their, 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 their acting. And then silly dove America does even more. Oh, they're our allies now. Well, why don't we just invite them to show them our, uh, our air forces and our, all that we have. Or perhaps we can even train their pilots. Oh, yes, of course you can. But you know what, friends, brethren? Do you think the German Secret Service is asleep? <laughs> Meanwhile, you're showing your wonderful ally, under quotation mark, your wonderful ally, all of your aircraft might and all of your military might. Do you think the German intelligence is asleep? Let me tell you one thing that you should know. Former Yugoslavia was something what is today Europe. We were integrated, South Slavic people were integrated much better than Europe. Former Yugoslavia was the fourth might in the world when it comes to military power. The economy of former Yugoslavia was booming and it would have reached probably amazing proportions, but it was what? Oh, it was a rival to European Union. They could not stand to have a rival.
So what they did? Well, in the 80s of the last century, German Secret Service just sent its spies all over the country to see who they could possibly bribe to make a war, uh, split Yugoslavia into small little nations like they have already achieved. And it's not enough because they want to split now Serbia into even smaller units. So to split Yugoslav, former Yugoslavia, then we can just suck them into our European Union one by one. But they'll be weak. Each one of them alone will be weak enough to be a rival to us. And each one of them we can just neutralize by sucking them in. Plus all these bad Serbs, you know, they also, they were all the allies. They were with the allies, with the Western allies in both world wars. They were always on the right side and they also defeated us. So we need to punish them. And exactly that's what, that is what is there they're doing to us right now. And all these things with Kosovo and all these, these, these things that you might hear in your news from time to time, you don't even understand what it is, but we understand what it is. It's a German punishment for my nation, brethren. Because we did not accept their Herren of Volk, their master race. And we were on the side of both, all allies, Western and Eastern. We were Russian allies, we were American allies and British allies. And some good old Americans and British would know that. And if you ask them, they will be very ashamed of what America and Britain have done to Serbia, especially about the bombing in 1999, when all the Serbian infrastructure was completely destroyed, at least 3,000 people killed, but they were called collateral damage by NATO, you know, collateral damage. Oh, NATO is destroying military targets. Oh, but how come that you, how come that you hit with your missiles, you hit this uh, apartment building or that? Oh, well, well, it's just collateral damage. What can we do? Oh, what can we do? Well, you can do nothing, but uh, one of these days, the lovely ally, false ally called Germany, and in Psalm 83, it is even prophesied with whom is going to be destroying all the Israelites, including the state of Israel, sadly. But it's prophesied. Anyhow, European army, brethren, it's there. Oh, it's called the European Border Police right now. But don't worry. Don't worry, brethren, Germans. Germans are developing the GPS for Europe. Germans are developing satellites. And Germans, there is no way you can hide from them. When the Great Tribulation comes, rest assured, there is no place to hide. When Serbia was bombed, the former State of uh, Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, said to us, said to the... Um, to the president of Serbia. Oh, don't worry. We can spy on you from satellites. We can even hear what your cooks are speaking there in the basement. Brethren, satellites will be developed. GPS will be developed. The European army will be developed. There is no way you can hide anywhere. Unless, if you are not zealous for the work of God, brethren, if we just fall and become all Laodiceans, there is no way you can, we can fight. We can just count on being if we are alive, incarcerated in their Nazi concentration camps. Now, if you didn't know, if you're not aware, what does that mean? Well, just read about the Holocaust, whatever, and then you will know. But this time, it won't be the Holocaust of the Jews. Only this time will be the Holocaust of Ephraim, if you wish, because Ephraim, being the oldest and being the leader of the Ten Tribes, is considered to be, when you say Ephraim, he considered the Ten Tribes, to which all the Anglo-Saxon people believe, belong to. And, of course, a set of nations in Western Europe. In any case, back to our story, 2016, we, Serbian congregation, as a formed congregation, joined with services that we held every Sabbath and uh, holidays we held to the best of our understanding and knowledge and ability. With all the things we had, we just, as a formed congregation, joined CCOG. We were very surprised to find out that there was no CCOG congregation. There were no organized organized meetings on the Sabbath because holy convocation is integral part of the Sabbath keeping. We were surprised. And then when I went to Africa the next day when I was ordained there, that's okay. But I noticed, first of all, some churches didn't have the name. Continued Church of God. Other churches were being, 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 being promised to have their, their 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 floors paved and I don't know their church buildings being done and 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 and, and built, uh, 
I noticed and I just kept a journal and I just uh, basically recorded all the things that I noticed. But I noticed even worse, brethren. I noticed worse their treatment of animals. Them throwing rubbish out of the window, out of the car window. And I know it's not only me who have seen it. Those who came, who went there after me have seen the same. That was horrendous, and I've kept it in my... And many times with, with Bob Thiel, I would just start the conversation. And just I would just say, I'm very reserved about Africa. I don't even know how much truth is coming out of there. And I said, there is one more thing that bothers me. I'm not sure how much of the truth those people do understand. Because, brethren, I noticed when I mentioned Europe, when I mentioned the role of Germany, when I mentioned holocaust they don't even know what holocaust is better because they live in their own just like you americans live in your own in your own world and you cannot fathom that there is a society without freedom there is uh, there is a society without part-time job there is a society where there is no there are no tests a b c d and pick the right answer just like you can understand the people in africa just simply have their own their own myopic world their own problems they've got no idea about the rest of the world so i was wondering how much did they understand the bible prophecy in particular because you have to understand the bible prophecy how can you understand the revival of the holy roman empire if you don't understand the pro if you don't understand the history of europe and yes i know i know that history is a very boring and, and disgusting subject the way how they made it at school but brethren history is very exciting because god has been involved in historical events all along there was only not nobody there to explain it to you, but I will. There is only one what motivated me, me to read the Bible. There was only one when my history teacher said that the Bible was the first historical book. She did not explain how and why, but I later thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because remember the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel have all the four major kingdoms prophesied. Yeah, it's right there. From Roman Empire to the European Union today. So, can we say that that's the first historic book? Yeah, sure we can. Sure we can, because the prophet Daniel gives us outline of all the, all the empires as they come and go. But anyway, I'll spend some time. There used to be a church in, 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 in Europe together. So there used to be like a booklet, like, like a magazine in, in, in the past. And I'll have to go with you through that, because, brethren, you have to understand. You have to understand the beast. You have to understand that beast that you read about in the book of Revelation in New Testament. You have to understand how it was rising and falling. The last fall was the defeat of Hitler and Mussolini. Mussolini was obsessed with the Roman Empire, with the restoration of the Roman Empire. Did you know that, brethren? Did you know that? So, I have to go through with you through all of those things. You have to understand it. You see, the problem with Africa was its myopic, their vision was myopic. But I thought it was my duty and the duty of all the church to teach them, to tell them, to do something about it. But nobody was done about it. You know, we well, got flowery reports from Africa, how uh, this congregation all of a sudden here, you know, joined here, that congregation there, this country, this guy. One of our members here in Serbia, you know, the, the, the people in Serbia are not stupid. They're just uh, all of our membership. We've got about, we have, a, we have five baptized members and equal number of unbaptized members and here and there, few of the other uh, people who are sympathizers. But anyway, people of Serbia are not stupid enough. And then sometimes in 2022, after about several years in the church of in the continued church of god people began asking me questions asking me questions like uh, there was one witty question from one member who is very witty he said you know uh, 10000 we have 10000 members in africa well supposedly of course i knew by that time when he asked question i knew it was a lie but 10,000, supposedly 10,000 questions. All right, 10,000 members. Does that mean, since we're a Philadelphia remnant, does that mean that we're going to have in the place of safety 10,000 black Africans and just a handful of us whites and so on? <laughs> of course, he knew it was a witty and funny question, and he knew he was facetious, but anyway, he asked it. I said, of course not. Because I said to him, I don't even know how many of those people in Africa really converted. 
that's what really always concerned me, brethren, because I always felt, I, 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 I always felt that something was missing there. I always tried to, exp I always tried to, to suggest, let's make an anonymous survey. Let's have, you know, several questions in that anonymous survey. Uh, show that to the local congregations. Uh, let hear the answers and let's see what they do not understand. Because, because if there is one thing that was always emphasized in continuing church of God was prophecy and prophecy and prophecy. But Christian practical Christian life very little. But prophecy and prophecy, you know. All right. And I was considering, well, okay, how much of that prophecy is understood by people there? Because I was there, I was there, and I didn't really get much. You know, I had a problem because in the midst of my in the midst of my preaching in one of the churches, I mentioned the word Holocaust. And the guy who was my translator, who happened to be actually even a student from America, they didn't even know what is Holocaust. They didn't know how to translate it. And I thought, well, wait a second. If they don't know about the major traumatic event, like Holocaust in the world history, how much of other things they wouldn't understand. Oh, speaking of Africa, let me tell you something else. It's a, an anecdote I heard many years ago. Uh, the various witches in Africa and those who use demons and manipulate with demons, during the Second World War, they could not really manipulate much because there were not much demons left in Africa. Uh, somebody said to one of our members back in those days that uh, all those demons went to Europe to serve Hitler, so... Uh, uh, there was not much of them left in Africa, so they could not really exercise their powers because those witch doctors and stuff, they exercise powers unless you're converted anyway. I'll come back to witch doctors in a minute. But anyway, I came back home after Africa with some of my doubts. Shortly after that, a man who is not part was not part of CCOG, a man from another church, I'm not sure if he's still part of that big church, but if he is, it's fine. If he's not, that's okay. A man contacted me and said that there were elections held here in Kenya. You know, how can we teach others if we, if we ourselves first don't give good example? What do you mean, I said? Oh, he said, Evan Soching and his son Braddox, well, his son Braddox actually was running for the for the seat in the, in the National Assembly of Kenya. I was shocked. And that wasn't the only shocking thing that I saw when I was with Evans. What I saw with Evans was also, Evans told me how he took one of his sons to a uh, Kenyan military. And his son is now a cadet. He was so proud, as he told me. And I was like, wait a second, doesn't he know that true Christians are not involved in war warfare? But I, I heard what he said and I kept it quiet. Then I asked him something else, and he would say, "Oh, I have to ask uh, Sosten about it." Sosten was, Sosten was a member in Malawi, and I remember that he was disfellowshipped, as Bob Till told me, because of his adultery. Oh, okay. I'm like, why? Why would he now uh, talk to Sosten about something? So he's in touch with somebody who is disfellowshipped. Another disturbing thing. Third disturbing thing: there were some young guys, three of them, I think. One named Job. I remember him very well. And about three guys working at the farm, serving as uh, shepherds and uh, stiffs and things like that. And uh, oh, this what you're passing is disgusting advertisement. I think for the circus. I don't go to circus because I think it's abuse of animals, by the way. And I would very much encourage all the true Christians not to go to circuses. If you love animals, keep animals and, and, and care for them, but don't don't go to circuses when they force animals to do things that are not natural. Anyway, but yes, sometimes in my town you see you have this uh, you have this uh, car going around and announcing there is a circus in your town. Yeah, sure. I've had enough circus in the Church of God, frankly, brethren, that I don't need more circus circus with animals. But in any case, back to the so. Uh, and the man said, oh, uh, let me give you, the, the national radio has just announced the uh, election results. And he, of course, I alerted quickly Bob Thiel. And yes, uh, Bob Thiel quickly established that it was it was true. And uh, both, you know, Evan Soching and his son Braddox uh, promised to him that Bob Thiel said to, to Braddox, you cannot be a deacon 
uh, if you if you are in. But what happened was later I learned that uh, Braddox was part of another Church of God that permitted elections. That was before he was supposedly in CCOJ. Braddox was ordained a deacon uh, as well as I during the Nairobi conference. Evans was ordained an evangelist. But I was thinking, okay, this is all now very strange, getting very, very strange. And uh, I alerted Bob Till to this. Bob Till reacted quickly, and uh, uh, these two promised that they would not get into elections again, you know. And Bob Till informed me that, you know, they promised and so on. Uh, then later there was a funeral somewhere in Kenya, and one of the local deacons there that I used to appreciate very much and helped before I realized that I was being fooled, just like many of us Muzungus or white people, uh, because he had a compound and his church building was perfect. It was built through sponsorship of who knows who knows what church anyway, because those people there are known for church hopping and, 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 and doing all kinds of things to milk money from the West. So the church was very good building, and I, I, I said to him, why, well, why are you tenant? Why don't you just live in this building? Oh, he had some whatever, whatever excuse. They always have excuse, of course. They either have excuse or they just uh, seemingly agree with you, but then just dismiss you as soon as you turn back uh, and, 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 and go away from them. In any case, because then I thought, because he promised to me that he, I said, you should, uh, you have this piece of land here. You should just grow some vegetables, and perhaps that will just solve your hunger and hunger of some. There were about eight members in that congregation, but the church building was absolutely perfect uh, for all of our Western standards. It was absolutely marvelous, well built, you know, nice windows, uh, good construction, roomy. So I helped him. In fact, I even asked others in CCOG to help with that, and they did. Uh, I was neglecting my own needs, and I helped him, you know, uh, I helped him uh, dig a well. I helped him install electricity there that he would then tell me that, oh, he could not. Uh, you know, the soil is very poor quality, so he cannot really plant anything. And then at that point, I realized that I was being scammed and I was being, I was being, you know, used, brethren, misused by a deacon, by the way, by a deacon in Kenya. Yes, on the border with Tanzania. So now you will know who he is. I won't mention his name because I don't, think, I don't think that many of them are worthy to be mentioned their name. But I have to, I'll have to mention to some people just to, so that we will just prevent this further abuse. And anyway... We learned, yes, that deacon happened to be at the funeral, and then uh, uh, those others attending the funeral asked, supposedly, if that's true what he said, because you never know what is true. Those people just, Gentile mind, said brethren, they can lie to you without even, <laughs> without even any remorse. Oh, no, you can't get it, of course. Yes, I know you cannot understand it, but that's, that's how it is. You trust me if you wish. If you don't, I wish you all to have some experience with that gentle mindset, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, so that deacon heard how the response from Evans and uh, Braddocks was, uh, well, no, they cannot uh, really, they cannot really, they will not participate in the election again uh, because it's too expensive. Too expensive, I was thinking. Wait a second, because I know they have regular regular money flowing from California to them. And I thought, well, wait a second, who paid for those expenses anyway? When I raised it up with the overseer, here, oh, he just dismissed it. Oh, no, no, no. Evans assured him that uh, he was not using church money for that. I was like, oh, well. So you see, all of those things were just the beginning and I was very I was very 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 disappointed already with Africa and then Evans asked me in one of the correspondence how that I should help him get some money because on his farm he has got he has got some uh, let's call it facility which he used in the past as a school and then he wanted to turn that facility and build some more for the people to keep the fees at his farm and he asked me for money I said, shame on you, I said. I said, shame on you, 
because all the church money that we, as far as we knew, in the continued church of God, all the money we had was going to Africa, Africa and Africa, as if no other continents, no other areas in the world did exist. Africa and Africa. And all of our tithe money goes to Africa. Thankfully, we in Serbia, some of us are employed, many of us are not because of the Sabbath and the other problems. But uh, some of us are employed. Thankfully, we never, we never, uh, you know, the, the the money we had, the tithe money was enough for us to keep us here going with our church activities rather than sending to anything. So thankfully, we didn't send one single dollar or dinner, in our case, to to that place. But nevertheless, we have heard all the time, all the things. Africa is poor. Yes, we understand that. Uh, and all of our all of our tithing is going to Africa. All the tithes go to Africa to help the poor poor people in Africa. Interesting enough. And uh, for a decade they've been now in in touch with 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 they've been associated with Continuing Church of God. How many of those people in Africa are self sufficient? Except for one, one who is known to us in Malawi to be stealing whatever is donated. He steals and puts in his shop. He might be only self-sufficient, but he's self-sufficient to deceit and money and money, money, money abuse. How many people in Kenya are self-sufficient, brethren? Zero. Is that how the government of God sh should be working? Is that how God's money is supposed to be squandered? Even worse. You know, the overseer says, well, I don't take any salary from the church, which is true, which is commendable, which is marvelous. Which is marvelous that he doesn't. But then, you know, there was, when we said, but look, with God's money being squandered there, oh, no, it's not squandered. No, it's the money I earned, but because, you know, I've just given it to the church, uh, it's my, it's not God's money, it's my money, so it's not being squandered. I was like, I heard that recently, somebody told me, I'm like, oh, please. What kind of circular reasoning, as one my or my friends called it, what kind of circular reasoning is that? Isn't all the money that we have God's money, brethren? Anyway, that was 2017. I was reporting, so wasn't shouldn't have response been it's too it's too expensive. Shouldn't response be look, friends, it's unchristian, it's not Christian, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's contrary to God's law, it's contrary to the Bible. So we're not going to be in the elections anymore. No, that was not the response. The response was it's too expensive. Then I realized, well, of course. Those people in Africa, in Kenya in particular, are not willing to change. Then I thought, wait a second, when I was among them, really, I wonder how many of them were really converted? How many of them were there because they wanted to live a Christian way of life? How many of them were there because they wanted to follow what the Bible says? And how many of them were there for their personal gain? Because, you know, there was always some money coming from the West, so they could at least get crumbs, if not the main part. They could at least get crumbs, and that you know that could just keep them going. And then and, you know they're never they're never well off enough. They're not self sufficient, but at the same time they're dependent. So you know they'll just keep them tied to the continued church of God, and that's it. And I was thinking, how much of all of that is just a sham? How much of all of that is just a lie? But you know we constantly had this we constantly had this 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 reports from Africa. Oh, I don't know how many people. We don't even know where they come from. Who used to pastor them? How did they get? How did they get? Uh, 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 how did they get uh, converted? How did they? Who convert? Through whom? Who baptized them? We never know. No, 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 nothing. In the meantime, in the meantime, I organized, as I mentioned, Skype services, brethren. Because I was added to this to the to the forum, electronic forum, of which of CCOG, of which I have nothing positive much to say, except that I promised that in my inaugural speech I shall I shall uh, 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 apologize to Andre to Andre Nelson, a young man who just uh, because he was defending the truth and attacking one of the heretics who was on that forum. I said that I would ap apologize. I think I, I promised him I'll apologize in my inaugural speech for all the uh, unpleasant things he had because he attacked that heretic. I was by that time, uh, after a while, I just left that forum because I couldn't waste my time anymore with that because there were plenty of people with their own ideas. Some wanted to have gun ownership, others had some other ideas, and there was always a core of those who hated me, you know. Core of those who hated me, you know. 
one was from Canada, two were in, in, in the States, that three, and they were always, as soon as I joined that forum, as if they wanted, you would think, because CCO didn't have much of the uh, preaching cutter, and I remember that uh, Bob Thiel asked me to give a sermon, sermonette when he came first time in Serbia, and I delivered a sermonette on 10 virgins. And I imagine right after my sermonette, uh, his wife said, oh, you're so, such a good speaker. So CCOG, first of all, doesn't have any good speakers. CCOG doesn't have any Ambassador College alumni. I was the only one. And here was I, and uh, 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 you know, on the suggestion of Bob Till, I was edited at forum. And you would think that members of the forum would be delighted, I guess, to have a to have a to have an elder there. Especially an elder who had a, a library, Hope of Israel Library, which he basically in that library he basically have stashed and preserved all kinds of excellent materials. Old the Worldwide Church of God teachings, including difficult scriptures scriptures that all these nominal christians twist and turn and by doing that they attack the law of god and the true christian way of life you would think it would be a blessing that a person like that would join a forum that uh, that electronic forum that a person like that would be would be there you would think it would be a blessing but no you wouldn't believe all that the forum, well, when I when I said to Bob Till, this is useless, what kind of Philadelphian forum it is, because CCOG is supposedly a Philadelphian remnant, and supposedly the only Philadelphian remnant. I said, what kind of what kind of use is this forum? Oh, you know, people need to have point of connectedness. That's exactly what he told me. So, you know, I just thought they should, you know, I just gave gave forum to be run by these two other people and that's he's not even part of the forum his wife is on the forum so if there is any urgent problem she reports it to him but i said to him i understand point of point uh, point of connectedness that's easy but this is not a forum that spreads the truth this is the forum that spreads all kinds of heresies so after a while i left the forum because it was useless because all the things that i would just read them uh, you know, write to them from the old worldwide Church of God, mind you. They're supposed to be a continuation of Philadelphia work. All the things I wrote from the worldwide Church of God, all the difficult scriptures, various things, and I, sometimes I would spend half a day, because keep in mind that English is not my native tongue, as you can probably see it and feel it. I would sometimes spend half a day just to write everything in clear English, as clear as I could get, to make sure that everybody understood it, a half of my day would just go. You know, half of my day meaning I wouldn't clean the house. I needed to, you know, get some something to eat. I needed this. I would just sacrifice it all for the sake of forum. And then I just gave up. I thought this is just useless. If people don't appreciate it, if they don't need all of this, why should I bother about it? By the way, the difficult scriptures, the other day I made it finally the official explanation for the hope of Israel. And I explained in those difficult scriptures how I came to that how I got into that uh, script. I don't know who is the author. I don't care. I just give all the credits to the authors and I just typed it into a computer because it was a bound, a bound bunch of papers, which I just destroyed when, when I had anointing oil, which I brought to Kenya, by the way. And I was the only one anointing the sick in that country. I brought that anointing oil to Kenya and somehow it just spilled over all those papers as I just uh, didn't realize that the uh, that my uh, anointing oil bottle was open, so it was destroyed. And then I sat down and I just retyped it all, and then and now it's available to everyone. I put it even on the internet, on Facebook, on I put it so that other nominal Christians could see it, and I just shared it with you here. And that's a precious material, brethren. That's so precious material that I have no words how to... It's, it's worth 1,000 booklets on doctrine. Because all it's a synthesis of all that we had in WCG. Those people who typed it, they just uh, collected all of those difficult scriptures. They were just from all the sermons they heard, from booklets they read, from articles they read. They just took all that experience and explained those scriptures. What else could one wish? What else could a Philadelphian wish? I'm asking. 
But the electronic forum of CCOG was not really interested. They were interested in just, you know, their chit chats. A social club, you might say. And, you know, if you, if you read uh, History of the Church by Dr. Herman Hay, he described what is the social club equal to in the last days. And he predicted that in the last day the church will be like a social club. Not interested in the work, but in a social club. And that was my impression of that CCOG forum, and I just left. And ever since then, there was this fame that follows me that I have no enough, oh, I have uh, uh, zeal for the truth. That's what the uh, one of the leaders of that forum said. But I have no love for the brethren. My answer to him was, look, if love for the brethren is to tolerate heresies, Yes, I have no love for the brethren. I hate heresies. I cannot stand them. And why should I? After I was after the forum, I'm back now to Andre, Andre Nelson. Andre Nelson, Nelson says, Sasha, did you see this? Terry LaFrance has read, written something about the pyramids, about you know, aliens and all that. No, I said, friend, I said, I'm not, friend, I'm not on that forum anymore. But, uh, okay, tell me what it is. Let me see the latest. Let me see the latest heresy on the forum. He shared it with me and he said, I need to respond. I said, please do. You're a part of the forum. I'm not. So uh, I, I, I'm just staying away from there. You're a full, full-fledged full part of that forum. So please respond. And there was only one misformulation he had. He wanted to say, as you publicly share this, I'm publicly sharing this rebuke that's what andre wanted to say but uh, instead he said i'm rebuking you publicly yeah but let me tell you now the secret to those of you who didn't know he shared with me every word that he wrote in response and i said to him yes send it and he did the reaction of the forum oh how dare he? He is so young. How he, 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 he. Instead of all of them being adult members of a Philadelphian remnant standing up for the truth, they basically attacked the young man, zealous young man. They attacked him for being so young. How could he dare to say to somebody something like that? Shame. Then I said to his father as well. I said, shame on you as well. I said, hang your ha head in shame. Your son stood up for the truth instead of all of you jumping up and saying, yes, bravo, young man. That's the generation we need to see. That's a Philadelphia. You all just stood up for the heresy. Stupidity about pyramids being built by aliens and all of that rubbish. You call that Philadelphian remnant? Thank you, brethren. I'm not a Philadelphian. If that's what you think Philadelphian is Philadelphian, no. I'm not part of that. And I promised to Andrew I would apologize to him. And I'm apologizing to him now. As much as I'm going to apologize in a minute to many of you others who were misunderstood and who were sadly victims of such kind of Laodicean attitude, if that's Laodicean at all. Because I said to Bob Till, I wonder how many... Well, he said, why do you wonder? He said, there are so many unconverted people there. But even worse, I said... They're unconverted. They're supposed to be learning the true doctrines of the Bible. Instead, they're being fed all these stupidities and all these, all these, all these heresies about aliens, about pyramids, about you name it. You name it. Terrible. But brethren, all those, all those even, even difficult to understand scriptures are explained in now official, official manual you have received. Which is worth 1,000 or 10,000 or even 100,000 copies. Because all the WCG gist of the WCG experience, doctrines, teachings, understandings is there in that manual. And all you need to do is just, oh, do we understand about Nephilim, Genesis 6? All right, let's see it. We are not sure. Let's see it. You grab your manual. You open it up. You find, aha, Genesis 6. You find a quote, relevant quote. And then there is an explanation of those difficult scriptures, brethren. That's one of the most precious things I could have done in my life. In my turbulent life, I preserved difficult scriptures. Thanks to all of those who composed it. 
sometimes in the 90s or 80s of the last century i've if any of them hears it i've preserved it it's sold out typed out and it was my passover gift for 2018 but now that we are hope of israel we just i just made it official explanation so to andre to andre nelson my sincere apology on behalf of all those unconverted laodicean half converted thought to be the only philadelphian in the world my sincere apology to you andre you were right in what your response i was the one who backed it up so please hate me and i don't want to be a part of a church that has this kind of confusion brethren confusion is not of god so much for the forum and i apologize to andrew i've kept my word i've just remembered that i've just promised to him that i would in my inaugural speech that i would indeed inaugural speech i'm speaking without any notes by the way brethren because i thought that would be the best way to address you from my mind and sincerely as i do anyway so that was my disappointment with the forum i was already disappointed with with, with kenya i was disappointed with forum i thought all right and then sometimes in 2022 after me the very very zealous young man andre went to africa with his father terry and his brother andre was always very cooperative and andre was the one who asked me well terry also contacted me before he went he said uh, do you have any advice i said just don't give them money they need seeds they need whatever but just keep 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 very alert Andre approached me as well as a friend that I said, Andre, listen to me. Listen to me. This is important. When you go there, just keep the journal. Whatever you find that is illogical, uh, that violates common sense, that doesn't seem right to you, I just said, keep writing. Keep writing, Andre, I said, because one of these days it might be very important. And Andre, being perfectly submitted to the government of God, exactly heeded my advice. And then he alerted his father to certain things. And then we discovered the main, various main things that we didn't know. Among other things, we discovered that in 2022, there were another Kenyan elections. And guess what? Guess what? Braddock's Oma Ochiing, again, his name was on the election list. Now, I could no longer keep any secret from the Serbian brethren because on Braddock's, uh, on Braddock's uh, Facebook profile, there were various posters, rallies, everything else that would support Braddock's nomination for the for some kind of office i was i was shocked i noticed it but a serbian member another serbian member said to me did you see braddock's profile i said yes i did i said they're making exactly the same thing that they promised they would not do when I contacted Bob Thiel about it, Bob Thiel said, oh no, somebody actually, you know, used Braddock's name to put his name on the list. I was like, wait a second. Even in a country like Kenya, such a felony, it's so notorious, obnoxious, obvious. First of all, who would dare do that? But on the other hand, you know, in Kenya, if you have enough money, you can just bribe people to do all kinds of things. But still, would the election board be so that dumb and whatever? Now, of course, Terry Nelson wasn't 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 lazy enough. Terry Nelson just went ahead and uh, even paid to the election board certain money to get all the documents. And sure enough, the same passport number that uh, Braddock's used in 2017, he used again. It was his signature and there was the receipt of money paid for kenyan elections we wonder again whose money was used now if he he was willing to give all that money, i'm not sure about it and supposedly 
but uh, then and then and then the, the further the, the story develops. You know, you have all the documents, and then all of a sudden, well, supposedly Evans didn't know what his son was doing. Well, I'm really wondering because Evans and his son Braddox are very close. In fact, when I was in Kenya, uh, Braddox was our driver. And I remember when I, in one of our conversations, I just basically caught him that he didn't understand that we were not supposed to be involved in this world's politics. I remembered it. Oh, yes, I was mentioning on the uh, three boys that I mentioned working on the farm. Uh, one night we had a conversation and they asked me about disciplining our wives and all of that stuff. I was like, oh my, where did they get this from? No, they didn't get it from Evans, to be honest. They got it obviously from Islam because later I learned that there was an Islamic orphans whom you can, I guess, you can kind of, uh, you can be something like a foster parent to them. You know, that, that, that's the closest I can, I can picture to you in the West. So they were there serving on the farm, being given paid. Job told me he was paid and so on. But they're being Islamic kids. Wait a second. What kind of proselytizing is that? The third thing that I thought about Africa, and all of those you know things in Africa, in Kenya in particular, that I thought, oh my, something is wrong here. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And there it was, 2022 again, they're in the elections with a certain fee being paid to the election board. With whose money, I wonder? Since they're so poor and all the tithe money goes to there, we were shocked. And sometimes in 2022, uh, I think it was the second second visit that uh, Terry and his son made to Africa. This time they made it to Malawi. I was offered to go to Malawi, by the way. Bob Thiel offered me to go to Malawi. And let me just quote to him. He said, because, he says, want to send you to Malawi. Mind you, it's the poorest country in Africa, he said. And uh, I want to send you because I'm not sure that Ratson, Ratson, the local, local host, the Dratzen knows what he's doing. Oh, I remember the Dratzen that I saw him at the uh, 2017 Nairobi conference. So I remember the face. And no, I didn't. I don't remember having any spiritual conversation with him. But anyway, he is not sure what he's doing. All right. I thought, all right, there are many new people in the church. Yes, I can understand. There are many younger people. They may not really understand. All right. That's okay. That made sense. But... Soon after that, I read that Rasen becomes, oh, he was ordained by Evan Soching as a, as, a, as a deacon. Okay, I thought, all right. But soon after that, he was ordained a pastor. I'm like, wait a second. A man doesn't know what he's doing, and he's a pastor. <coughs> when later I confronted Bob Thiel with that, oh, he said, no, I didn't, didn't say that. I said, you did. You said it twice, because I remember very well what you said. Oh, he said, okay, well then, he just learned in the meantime what he's doing. I was like, wait a second, this, something is wrong with this, with this, with all this reasoning of him. But anyway, that's what he told me, and I, but I refused to go to Malawi, because I said to him, look, if it was a matter of life and death, I would. But when I was in Kenya, in the very capital of Kenya, I contracted a parasite. A parasite that no uh, medicine that various members brought to me, oh, they brought some green was it green green pills from from the local pharmacy it didn't work of course my my mouth my lips were swelling i was getting i was getting uh, i was getting upset i was my head was just huge as whatever it's a local parasite which now those of you in the west you have to understand they use their public water their public water is not for public use everybody in kenya even the locals buy bottled water to drink here in Serbia, that's not the case. Our public water is certainly not of the best quality, but at least it doesn't have parasites. So I usually eat, eat, drink water from the tap. Because to buy water, yes, there are there water, bottled water to be bought. Yes, it's available, but to me it's too expensive. Anyway. And what happened was that the uh, salad, which they served that day, was <laughs> washed with their tap water. So I didn't realize that. Because in Kenya, you either have to boil water before you eat, you drink it, or you have to buy the bottled water. I didn't didn't think about the salad. I ate the salad because I was just I was just willing to eat salad. I ate salad, and there it was. I contracted a wonderful parasite that overnight just worked very well. Now, thankfully, again, 
Bob Thiel with his, uh, I'm not sure why people make uh, doubt of his natural medicine, but his natural medicine worked. I called him to help and he just, uh, he just told me after his, he has a very specific way of, of uh, diagnosing whatever. And he said to me, it's, it's stomach parasite. Take this, take first two pills and then later. And I did it and I was, I was the next day, I was about fine. About fine. The next day I think I was ordained. By the way, how did that happen? He called me to room. I went when he arrived and he said to me, I'm thinking about ordaining you, ordaining you an elder. And I think about ordaining you Evans as, as, as evangelist. I said to him, I said that the last thing that I want to be in the world is elder because of the stress and responsibility and because of how people can be. And brethren, you wouldn't believe how mean people can be. And you wouldn't believe how inconsiderate people can be. But I said to, to him, I said, I said, but if I refuse, what if God calls me for that office and I refuse? Then I'll be opposing God's will. So I said, I'm not going to take a chance. Oh, he said, I consulted with somebody in LCG, whoever that would be, I don't know, because there are people in LCG who would know me, like a wonderful fellow, fellow from Colombia, Mario Hernandez. She's the Spanish voice. He's the Spanish voice of the, of the, of the LCG, for example, a wonderful gentleman, a uh, very good friend. Uh, I've known some people from the college and so on. And uh, okay. Oh, and he said, uh, but you know, the only concern you're not married, and uh, uh, and the girls and ladies that might come, you know, they might just come because of you, or not because. I said, Bob, please, brethren, let me just tell you something. If you think that being an elder is being something uh, super boy, super man, super, you're terribly wrong. First of all, God picks up the worst for all these offices in the church. Let me just tell you that. Secondly, if you think I'm something smart, no, I'm not, brethren. I'm I'm very average-looking Serbian male. There are countless males in this country that look much better than I, in every way, who are more macho, more whatever. And the third thing, just like it is the it is the culture in many countries. Uh, girls today fall for those who have cars, smart cars, uh, who are just well off financially and so on. I have no car. I have no even a bicycle, brethren. I, ha I just walk when I have to do something or I just use public transportation. Thanks for asking if you wanted to ask me. Uh, and the uh, house in which I live, I'm rent it's a rented house, by the way, built in 1969 and uh, of a very poor quality. Uh, when it comes to money, I have none, and I'm not going to any public places, to all of those disco clubs and whatever clubs. And I live a very boring life for females today. Yes. You know. What I did, one luxury that I have is that I bought some nice plant pots and I planted some trees. Not trees, sorry, but flowers to just make the balcony look nice. And I've adopted, I've saved, I've saved about... Well, at first three cats, straight cats, and then the fourth one came to my door. Three months ago, another one came to my door, wounded, and I thought he will not survive, but he survived. He was fighting for his life before my eyes for two months, rather than here, and he just stood fine on his feet, and he's, he now walks, he just goes around, and suddenly he comes to be fed from time to time. And since cats are carnivores, and the meat is the most expensive commodity, trust me, I, I think I, I, I spend more more money on meat and them sometimes than I wouldn't on anything else, but I'm not an attractive male by any any stretch of your imagination or any standard by this world. No, I don't have a car. I don't have even a bicycle. I'm thinking about buying one if I move from this hilly area to a more flat area, then bicycle could be useful. But no, I don't have a car. Just for you to know. Oh, how come you're in a... Well, that's come. Because I don't care about the car, because the car is just more expensive. What should I do? I don't even have a license. I don't want to have a license because I'm not, I don't feel I'm apt to drive. And I'm not going to use it. If, if I need to use public transportation or taxi or whatever, I'll use it. But that's it. You'll now be all shocked. How come you don't have? Well, be shocked. I don't. Many people here don't have a car because it's too expensive to have it. And our living standards do not allow it, you know, because you have to pay for fuel, which is very, 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 very expensive these days because why? We have war in Europe. Oh, another shock. That's what I said to those people in Africa who always come up with all kinds of things. I said, look, you're not the only area that has war. There is war between Russia and Ukraine. 
what does it have to do with well, it has to do with cars because we have to import oil we are not a country with the oil we have to import oil from russia or ukraine you know and as much as africa has to import wheat from both of those countries and now there is a threat of hunger if if that wheat export is if russia blocks it because it expires tomorrow no it expires on monday if russia doesn't extend that agreement that they had there might be some there might be some wheat shortage in africa which will cause which will cause hunger of which i hope to at least if possible we could spare the uh, malavian nation of that hunger if 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 malavian government would heed my one of my petitions that i gave to them because we're in good terms with both russia and ukraine you see we're in good terms because first of all they're slavic countries and second of all none of them has recognized the so-called state of kosovo anyway now where was i yes africa africa the forum and then terry wrote me a message sometimes because he went to malawi instead of me and he wrote to me a message which about says i have no trust in evans at all and i responded to him welcome to the club i said to him Yes, don't worry, this is motorbike in, in uh, the neighboring country. Yes, so sorry. So the isolation in this gentle nation is such that you can hear all kinds of noises from outside. Just to let you know, my dear friends. Anyway, so uh, I said to him, welcome to the club. I said, I have no trust in Evans since... Oh no, somebody is mowing the lawn. Oh my. In any case, I said, I have no trust in him since 2017 and... Uh, I have no contact with him because I because I raised some questions about the laptops. There were a couple of deacons. Granton Otieno was one, and the other one was uh, uh, the one who lives on the border with Tanzania. Ondigo Ochieng, no relations with 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 with, uh, with Evan Soching and Braddock Soching. Anyway, so the two of them just complained to me. They have no laptops that they're, they're translating literature into their dialects and uh, could i kind of intervene what would you do if you were a christian what would you do if you were a christian if you were an elder if two deacons come to you with that request i'm asking all of you to tell me what would you do i did what any other common sense christian would do i just write to i just wrote to bob thiel i said could you just see because there is a there is a constant uh, 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 contingent of laptops being sent by Bill Bill from Maryland because Bill that's Bill's business and Bill thinks that he's part of the work is to be providing laptops so that all the church youth and others would have laptops and yeah sure sure enough sure enough my dear brethren I do what do we realize <laughs> those laptops I didn't no notice many of them in in other churches all those all those youth there even in the most even in the remotest areas of africa all of them have got mobile phones but i didn't notice any laptops there was only one that i noticed in the congregation that is pastored by ezekiel ezekiel oanda and uh, yes on the go Ching received money from our friend uh, randy randy freeze supposedly for a laptop but anyway well randy you you're probably scammed my dear friend because laptops are constantly being provided supposedly by the church so uh, in ezekiel's congregation i noticed there was a there was a nice laptop and there was a hymns that he played from the from that laptop and that's okay forgive me for this sound i cannot do anything about it i am in closed windows everything is fine but you know everything is closed even though it's very hot outside but i cannot do anything brethren because they're just mowing the lawn and that's how it's being heard every time they do it so much about those of you who think that all the europe lives in i don't know what kind of luxury now you hear it doesn't my house is was built in 1969 from the poorest material at that time because after the second world war country was very poor so people would just use the poorest material that they could to save money or they didn't have money to buy to build this house so that you would know anyway so 
uh, I said to Terry, welcome to the club. I said I haven't, oh yes, uh, about the laptops. And then I raised the question about laptops. I said, uh, come on, where are the late laptops? Evans attacked me immediately. Have you seen any laptops around my house? I said, no, I haven't. So, and then he came to Bob Thiel and he said, Sasha is trying to tell me how to run things in Africa. Could you believe? Could you believe that false accusation? From that time on, I said to, I said to myself, you're not going to get involved in Africa again at all. That's why, among other things, I refused to go to Malawi. I said, my health can be endangered like in Africa, like in Kenya. And secondly, I said, I'll probably get in conflict with Evan Sochi and over something. And I know you wouldn't like it, Bob. So I said, no, I'm not going. That's why Terry Nelson went. And then Terry Nelson, 2022, writes to me, I don't trust. I said, I said, welcome to the club. I don't trust him since, since 2017. And since I was accused of trying to tell, can you believe? Can you believe that ludicrous, idiotic, brethren accusation? I was accused, I was trying to tell him in Africa how to run things in Africa. Oh my, because I asked for two lap, and I asked it for the work of God. Didn't ask money for myself, didn't ask money for anything stupid. I just said there are irregular contingents of laptops being sent to Africa. So there are two deacons that need those laptops because they broke down for whatever reason. Can you please secure that they be the first in line to receive laptops when the next contingent comes? That's all that I said. And I was accused. I'm telling Evans how to run things in Africa. Can you imagine that? Brethren, you tell me now, isn't that a dictator? Isn't that a lunatic? Is that a converted man? You tell me. Think logically and use your common sense. Anyway, Terry wrote me because, and then Terry wrote to me that he said I was in Malawi and he said, you know what, we had a nice driver, wonderful driver who works for the Malawian government and he says, he told me that these people these people, particularly that Ratson, famous Ratson Mulozova, is not really a man of God because because he's involved into witchcraft, he's involved in this, this and the other, he's doing adultery, he's using his nice car which he had, he's using that to attract the ladies' attention, he keeps trying to persuade hotel staff, female members to go out with him and all of that. Brethren, the moment I heard the word witchcraft, I had enough. I had enough. And then, as if I knew, Terry said, I need to present all of this to Bob. But for some reason, he presented this to me first. He said, you, you came to Africa, you went to Africa. He obviously had trusted me to present it to me. So he put me in a very odd situation. Because I had to, have, up to that time, I had to pretend before the Serbian congregation that all of those flowery reports from Africa, uh, rising of rising numbers of, of, of attendance and all of that was nice and, and, and true. But then I thought, no, no, no more. No longer. I said, enough is enough. And I said to God, to God of Israel, I said, you tell me. You tell me what does light has to do with darkness. Can a, a, can a house of God be built with a house of a, uh, what does it say, Belial? Is that how it says in Corinthians? Yes, that's something like that. How can I be in touch and association with those who practice witchcraft? And interestingly enough, those weeks, uh, for several weeks in a row, I was raving on in Serbian. I was raving on Serbian witches, Serbian witchcraft, and calling upon my nation to repent of using their services, to repent of reading horoscopes, to repent of astrology, to repent of consulting with demons. Then I said, you cannot be a Christian, not even nominal Christians, and consult with those witches because that's against the Bible. Those people are in touch with devil and then all of a sudden to my shock I receive a message which says I don't even know Terry says how many of these of our leaders in Africa are converted and I don't even know how my how many of them are involved in witchcraft but one certainly is it's Ratson Mulozoa and there are various testimonies about that testimonies from two of our deacons who are in in Malawi, there are testimonies for his wife and about his adultery testimonies of his children. 
oh, we need to present this to Bob Dylan stuff. I said, okay. But I said to Terry, and he can testify that to you. And I said to Andre, and even to Randy, I said, but don't think that Bob Till will change. Because his attitude toward Africa, as far as I had seen in these past seven years, by then I was about seven years in the CCOG, I said, he's, I've been trying, I've been trying for years to raise his awareness that something is wrong in Africa all the time, but he would always dismiss it, he would always find excuse, he would not listen to me. Because Africa is the center of every report. Africa and Africa and Africa. They didn't believe me. They hoped they would. He would change. Only to be disappointed. All three of them. Randy was the last one to write. A desperate email about corruption. Of course, the <laughs> response was the way it was. Terry was the one to write... Terry was presenting all the, the evidence. All the evidence Terry was presenting. Evidence of Kenyan CCOG being involved in, 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 in elections. And I think Terry even asked, what if? He wrote to Bob that I've seen some of those correspondents. He said, did you see what candidate? What is the profile of the candidate which Braddock supports? And what if? What implications would it be for the church if if Braddock's won <laughs> on the list of such candidates? What would be the what would we? No response whatsoever, or it was all dismissed, or it's rumors. Oh he he Bob Till he he contacted Evan Soching, or Evan Soching does not say that. Witchcraft, God forbid. Oh no. Andre Nelson. I still remember to this day one sentence. Andre was saying something about Philadelphia and Remnant. And I remember this sentence asked me in the half of the night. The sentence in response to Andre which said, Hope of Israel cannot possibly be a Philadelphia Remnant. Oh, so we have, a, we have now a supreme arbiter. We now have, and we have noticed, and the Serbian members were shocked with all the all the responses that they got. And then that supposed letter to the brethren, it should be called lies to the brethren. It's just filled with, it's rife with lies, all kinds of lies. In any case, it was all dismissed. Bob Thiel would call me once or twice. And I would just bring up the uh, Kenyan election issue. He would just give me that <laughs> that explanation how somebody put Braddock's name. Could you believe that? I was like, oh, please. Oh, please. Even the unconverted mind would see it. Even a child would see it. But no, it was there. Witchcraft. Oh, that was, that was really the, the, the topic which really set him off. Brethren, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, and there are people in the churches of God that could certainly confirm this, and there is at least one, one high-ranking minister in one of the large churches of God, in fact, the one that Bob Till left, who can really confirm this to me, because he told me this. He told me this in England sometimes, in, I think it was 2000, we were talking about the, uh, at that time I was part of the United Church of God, I think. No, sorry. Or perhaps I already, I already left. I already left. I left for the, for the church that got named. I got. I, I, I suggested its name, and it was incorporated under that name, led by David Hume. But anyway, um, in Rwanda, there used to be Worldwide Church of God. Rwanda was served by the office in Switzerland. The man, the late man, French speaking, Bernard Andrist, was in charge of Rwanda. Uh, I, I was impressed by that man because when there was this horrible civil war in Rwanda back in 1994, this man, in his late age, he uh, went to Rwanda with a bag full of water and food, and he went from the one to the other refugee camps looking for church members. I heard. That would be so 23, 24 years ago. 
that there were four deacons, four deacons in Rwanda, that he, Bernard Andrist, had to put out of the church because of witchcraft. I was shocked because I didn't realize somebody could not be healed, so those four obviously used the service, if we can call it that way, of witch doctors. And they were put out of the church. So witchcraft is nothing new under the sun when it comes to Africa. <laughs> Plus Terry Nelson, he will ref he can he can uh, confirm that to you, and he kept the feast in when was it 2021 I think. Here we see he discovered black magic in Mozambique, and he can give you the details. I remember when he discovered that. I remember writing to Bob Thiel, black magic in Africa. I said interesting. Didn't I? suspect because there were some rumors rumors but i didn't believe them i didn't spread them rumors had it that evans Oching, of course was the, also involved in in witch magic but because it came from on the i just thought perhaps it's just a lie perhaps it's unverified so i'm on I, but i just but i just nevertheless use this black magic occasion to write to bob till black magic in africa what else is there in africa that we don't know that's being hidden from us. Oh, never do you get straight response. Just like in Africa, or to be very precise, in Kenya. You always get, you just give them, you just tell them, for example, give, let me give you an example. Brethren, we live in 21st century. There is, uh, there, 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 there are things we have in 21st century, like internet. We are all scattered. Now, with the internet, we can get together, get to know one another. Wouldn't that be a Philadelphian love to love your brethren? We can introduce one another. To, we can be introduced to one another. And we can also hold services. And you can hold. we can hold Bible studies that are much needed for you here to be educated in the Bible, brethren. Oh, yes, beloved brother. That's a wonderful idea. Wonderful. Yeah. They always tell you what they want. They, they think what they think they want you, they want you to hear. And then once you just go away, nothing happens. Nothing really happened. Speaking of Skype services, Serbian congregation has used Skype services before even it was joining CCOG and even ever since joined, it joined the CCOG until, until even now. So the CCOG, if, if those who are now in CCOG using Skype to send you all kinds of things and stuff, if they're just honest, they can just say that uh, it was Sasha and Serbian congregation who introduced them to Skype. Otherwise, they would just keep crying to one another, how, what a pity we're so scattered, what a pity we don't have closer contact, what a pity, and I said to them one of these days, one of those days, when I was on that forum, I said, brethren, it's up to us. We are scattered, but we don't have to be. We can be very connected over internet if we wish to be. That's why now they can use internet. But interestingly enough, you know, it's, it's very interesting when you collect all those various people because you find them or they contact you, you just involve them in Skype and you involve the man from Northern Ireland who is still part of the apostate, uh, from, to the, uh, part of the organization which destroyed Worldwide Church of God. He's part of them. He maintains their site. He receives salary from them and even tithes to CCOG from that. He's still part of that because his wife is there. Oh, his wife is there and various friends. He's used to that. But nevertheless, he's faithful to CCOG. And then, you know, uh, he offended uh, and, and falsely accused one man, a prospective member that came through Terry and Andre. And Terry, again, can confirm all of you, all of these things that I'm telling you. And uh, he offended the man, accusing him of something disgusting that I won't even say. Totally innocent man who just made totally innocent comment about something. He couldn't, for example, believe that abuse of children is really there, so much present in the world, let alone in the Western world. So he just made a comment about that. He was accused right away that he is a child molester and all of that horrible things. And I suspended that Skype services to give the accuser, the man from Northern Ireland, to give him a, 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 a space to think about it and to repent. Oh, no. 
No, 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 no. He just, this man just formed his own. Oh, he just formed his own, his own Skype group. He learned how to use Skype through me anyway. And then he had a little clique of people as JB, Jamie from Australia. And then they would be just spending all their, all their time, all their time talking about other people and how those other people are not, are not faithful. They're not coming regularly to Skype services. Who is faithful? Who is not him? discussing somebody being faithful and still he is in the apostate apostate church which 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 destroyed the worldwide church of god absolutely ludicrous brethren ludicrous and part of that group was i think one man uh, who just recently wrote to one of our members here in serbia he said the sasha has written uh, so many uh, let me see how did he say so many uh not insulting, but he said, uh, mocking, mocking posts about CCOG, and that, uh, and because that that that's evidence, that's clear evidence that he has no love. Well, uh, to that man, uh, he was mocked when he was in school. I was mocked for various reasons in my nation. I know what mocking is. Sasha, I don't. Re I, if saying the truth is mocking, fine. Yes, I know that on the on the side band, which now regularly has all kinds of mocking things, and they've been mocking, they've been mocking, you know, mocking Bob Thiel and CCOG and his so-called prophetic gift and all any of that. I've never written anything mocking. I wrote only the truth to confirm it, or to just uh, say that it's not the way how it's presented on that side. But I don't recall writing mocking posts about CCOG. But I understand, you know, I'm not part of them anymore, brethren. So now I have to be portrayed as a villain. I'm a villain who, and yes, interesting enough how some of them try to write to Serbian members as if they're little children. Look, let me tell you all here and uh, elsewhere who listen here. Uh, Hope of Israel. Worldwide Church of God members in Serbia are not little children and they're not my puppets. And there is another lie being promulgated all the time. No, we cannot be possibly Philadelphian because we don't have Philadelphian governance. Oh, really? <laughs> what do you know about Philadelphian government and governance, all of those who support this African sham and everything else? But I'm running ahead of myself. Sorry, brethren. I know I'm getting long. But this is inaugural speech, and I want to put all of these things in in recording, so that there might be those who will be interested to hear this. But you might be interested to hear this anyway. As soon as Terry wrote to me all of that, I just uh, went before the Serbian congregation. I said, "Brethren, I'm here no longer to lie to you." Uh, that will be sometimes about October, November. 2022 must be sometimes after the feast, brethren. I'm not going to lie to you. The feast I spent in Australia, by the way, and by that time, from all of those reports that I never knew about witchcraft and everything else, I just uh, I was feeling deeply ashamed before the Australian congregation because I was telling them they have to be faithful, they have to be enduring, they have to they have to endure the mark of the beast, they have to endure persecution, they have to endure their own poverty because. The, the, the economic situation in Australia is worse than ever. And in the meantime, I knew what was going on. Oh, one thing that I did, I just, well, that was my decision. I just told them to keep their tithes and offerings in Australia because there'll be emergency cases that you may need. And with each con congregation member, I just personally explained why. To my friend Jamie, I explained, I said, Jamie, there are things you don't know because you're not an elder, but there are things I do know as an elder. I have to know them. And I knew what's going on. All of that money that you'll be sending from Australia will go to Africa. And what's going on in Africa is horrendous. I, 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 I was, well, I felt enough confidence to tell him all that. I didn't speak about Africa to others, but I mentioned that they would need some money here. All of them didn't understand, but I said, it's my decision. It's my decision, I said, I know. If Bob Thiel was not happy with that, he can probably change it, but that's not mine. My conscience was peaceful, brethren, was at peace, because I told them, according to what I knew or what I was aware of, I just told them how to manage that money. That was it. In the meantime, my friend Jamie, his car, 
is you cannot live in Australia without a car. You cannot live in America without a car. So I understand when I say I have no car, you wonder how come that, well, how come? I live in a different country and I can just use public services or my legs, my feet to walk. And I'll do that, brethren, or perhaps one of these days I get, I can buy a bicycle and then, and then, and then, have some help with, with that but still i'm not going to have a car i don't know how to drive i don't want to drive i don't want to be involved in the traffic and it just costs so much because it's like having a child i would rather feed cats and dogs and and and, and birds and whatever but the drive no i'm not going to drive enough for that in any case and those of you in africa if you hear this those of you in Africa, your your stupid superstition about cats is going to be is going to be rooted out if you're going to be Christians. Cats being spies of witches. Who told you that stupidity? Where did you read it? Did you read it in a Bible somewhere? Anyway. So I went before the Serbian congregation and I said, Brethren, I'm not going to lie to you anymore. Brethren, I'm not going to pretend anymore that everything is funky dory that everything is great and all of those things reports from africa and i said brethren i'm just telling you all this this that and the other so i told them what basically terry nelson told me plus they knew my own they knew they knew my own experience anyway i said brethren terry and randy and uh andre are optimistic they think that if they present all this truth to bob Thiel, that something's going to change because of course according to the bible those people have to be out of the church but i said i'm not optimistic i don't think that will happen but brethren i just want to announce to you and back then at that time i made my my decision i've been preaching to you about which doctors here in serbia and everywhere brethren according to my conscience i want to tell you that if by the last day of unleavened bread these people are still in the church. I want to tell you that I'm out. I'm no longer going to be affiliated with Church Continued Church of God. I'm just announcing that to you as my most immediate friends, people who are here, uh, you know, gathering with me faithfully. I have feeling, I have a moral feeling to tell you that I don't want you to be shocked and to be surprised. I can no longer support Continued Church of God work and their preaching because of because I'm affiliated unbeknown to me and unbeknown to other members i'm affiliated with which practitioners with 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 people who are just like this and those problems in africa the one i said you know the problems we had with cco job forum and, and 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 all of that so i said that's enough i said i'm going to leave that does not obligate you i told them but i think you you should know And <laughs> all the church members here in Serbia said, oh, no, we could see something was wrong. Because back at the feast 2022, somehow it came to me as I was on my way to Australia. And if you think that trip to Australia, to another country, to a different continent with different time zones, Foods and everything else is not a sacrifice. It's not love for the brethren. You're terribly wrong. And if you think, you can ask Terry Nelson and Andrew Nelson how it is to travel to Africa to sacrifice all of your Western luxuries and go to the poorest or one of the poorest countries in, in Africa and, 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 and endure and hear all kinds of things. And you think you came to the brethren and then all of a sudden you have a wonderful, honest driver who works for the government tell you that, you know, you're basically among the false Christians. You just, if you think it's not a sacrifice, why do you think that Terry Nelson wanted to go to Africa? Because he wanted to have a holidays, really. No, he went because he wanted to preach the gospel. That was my, that was exactly my motivation as well. But I discovered there were too many red flags there saying ding, 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 red flag, red flag, red flag. Something is wrong here. And I could only suspect what was wrong. Thankfully, Terry Nelson was enduring enough to make his own investigation <laughs> investigation what might be wrong so then he learned in the meantime that the malavian government was already investigating the so-called 
pastor rats in Mulozova because what happened was that there was a wonderful lady at the government. Later, the uh, government of Malawi had a reshuffling, so she's no longer in the office, but she's still being used by the president of Malawi because she, her e biography is impressive. Honorable Lady Patricia. She's known. She was at the uh, Ministry of that's a Ministry of uh, Gender gender equality something like that social justice gender equality it was a ministry in charge of preventing abuse of girls and women for dowries and all these things that you know people can abuse them for in africa and she was for gender equality and so on she happened to be a friend to our our friend uh, uh to one of our deacons anyway now the ex-wife of ratson molozova so the Honorable Lady Patricia, when I checked her profile on, on, on internet, it was very there were very positive comments about how much she has done to prevent abuse, how much she has done for the uh, for, 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 for the ladies in Malawi. She happened to be a friend to uh, to Priscilla, to Priscilla, our deaconess. And because Deaconess, our Deaconess was abused by Ratson, who kicked her out of her of, of their of their of their bedroom and 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 then denied denied the money he received from from the church by the way he denied to even take care of his children buy school textbooks and all that other then he tried to kill her by using witchcraft and uh, we have a uh, photos of that and we have priscilla's cousin who happened to minister in a sunday church passing by and seeing what ratson gave to their son uh, Victor and told him, "Oh, just put you know, put this, put this. I've brought this for the welfare of your mom. Just put this on the, all the four corners of the, around your house." And this 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 cousin said, "No, don't you do that. This is a witchcraft requisites that it would that is supposed to invoke invoke the uh, uh, lightning and lightning to to strike to strike the the house and kill the owner." And then we learned that the government of Malawi, thankfully for that, the government was already doing investigation. When I mentioned that once to Bob Thiel, I got the response that he heard of, and then quotation mark, female investigator, but nothing came out of that. So, Andre got the response that he cannot be possibly a Philadelphian. Uh, well, Terry got all kinds of ludicrous responses. And the last one I remember was that was Randy Randy Fries who wrote a very short and desperate email about the corruption in Africa. And the response was, "Oh come on, I've investigated all of that. Nothing of that is true." <laughs> Later, he was uh, Randy was re accused of uh, possibly being one of the instigators of the Hope of Israel. Oh no. I had to uh, then on band because I don't communicate anymore with Bob Till. I don't want to. But on the band, I said to everybody, I confess publicly, no, Hope of Israel is my idea. I'm the one who initiated that because I said to the Serbian congregation, I said, friends, I will no longer be part of this. And I don't see that anything will happen by the last, gra by the last day of unleavened bread. And I said to the same to the Terry and to Randy, because people were just now looking up to me. There was a man from Norway as well, Hoover, who just uh, heard all of this. He was so thrilled about the hope of Israel and the house of Israel, truth and everything else. People were brethren looking up to me. What shall we do now? I said, we will not hasten. We will not precipitate things. But if nothing changes, we are out because we cannot be a light and be in association with darkness. That's what I said. So the hope of Israel was my idea, my initiative, and it gave, derived the name from the library, which I founded five years ago, today, tomorrow. Tomorrow is the fifth anniversary of the library Hope of Israel. However, we wanted to be registered, of course, and I cannot, I cannot enough I cannot express enough of my gratitude for the Malavian government, which in 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 in, in matter of days registered us in their country with one flattering comment: because they are true Christians. So the government of a small African nation 
But you know, oh yes, 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 yes. While registering us, Terry was smart as always. Brethren, I never issue people orders. It's not true there is no government of God in hope of Israel. There is. But unlike those who issue orders and expect to be commanders of I don't know what kind of unit, unlike those who pump thousands of dollars to Africa, meanwhile telling somebody in Australia whose car is breaking down, who's having constantly breaking down after the feast. Jamie's car constantly broke down after the feast. And he was unemployed. He barely found uh, some employment. The uh, His housing is not the best. Constantly the response was, well, the response was, uh, I'll keep in my prayers. Oh, really? What a wonderful. So I'm not that kind of government of God, brethren. We have a family model government of God in which I consult. And if you think that Mr. Armstrong was different, I dare you, he was not. Because when I was in England, I happened to, I happened to meet his his cook and his uh, the man her wife, her, her husband Paul um, uh, he was he was in charge of maintaining Miss Ramson's suits and his wife what was her name my word oh they 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 drove the old Lada Lada Russian car was it Hazel was it I can't remember now it was a long time ago she was a cook oh she just loved he would just made me she would just made me the Jewish bread challah on Friday nights. It's a traditional Jewish bread made for the Sabbath anyway. She would just made challah. That was so beautiful. She was a wonderful cook anyway. She told me Mr. Armstrong would always consult with other people. He would always ask other people, no matter who they were, for their opinion. And then she revealed something else. How naive he used to be. He said, you know, sometimes I had to tell him, Mr. Armstrong, uh, not, not, not everything that people tell you is, is, is. Sometimes they tell you something that to be nice, because you might remember in England we used to have in 1974 there was a Bricket Wood College, right? Another branch of Ambassador College in England, anyway. And then there was a, there was a garden, you know, that English people are known for maintaining gardens, and their public parks are absolutely marvelous, uh, with all kinds of with all kinds of flowers and stuff. Anyhow, um, there was a garden. And uh, people would say that was the most beautiful garden in England, and poor Mr. Armstrong would believe that. And she said, you know, I had to tell him, Mr. Armstrong, no, no, people are just being nice. No, this is not the most beautiful garden in England, you know. He was naive, poor fellow. And I wonder how many people, perhaps, those who were ministers or those who just expressed their loyalty, were lying to him as well. Anyway, uh... So Mr. Armstrong was the same. He would ask anybody he came in touch with, with their opinion, what they thought. He would ask her cook, his cook, his man who was maintaining his, his suits. And he would listen carefully what people said. That I'm exactly the same. It's not true that there is no government of God. From the very start, there is the government of God in the hope of Israel. Yes, I'm the one who initiated it. And I said to my friends, I'm going to be hope of Israel because that's the loveliest thing that I could see. But Terry did something amazing. Amazing because we had, by that back in 2018, when Randy Fries and I were good friends, and we are still good friends, of course, when we were in touch, uh, Randy said, how can I? He said, I would love to kind of help preaching of the gospel. But uh, And then we came to the idea, the marvelous idea. And it was mine idea as well, but fine. I could have never carried out without Randy. I said to him, why don't we start a radio? Radio that will be called Hope of Israel Worldwide. <laughs> sure enough. And with Randy, you don't really have to spend much time telling him what to do. He usually comes even to me and says, look, I've, I've decided to do this and that. Uh, just to inform you, I said, excellent, go ahead. I'm not here ordering ordering people what to do. They're just mature adult people. They know what to do. And yes, there is a government of God. And I'm on the top of that government on hope of Israel, but I'm not a dictator. I'm not pumping thousands of dollars to anyone. And in my resignation letter to Bob Thiel, I mentioned, I said, I want to stay with friendly terms. But brethren, no, I don't think he's my friend anymore because his minions in Africa kept writing to me and others threatening emails, unwanted emails. 
in one of these those unwanted emails is half literate evan so ching has written to me how uh, uh, he's the one in africa and bob till is a uh, bob till is the main man and how could i and how could i be that bad and uh, how could i listen to my friend terry and i'm the same bad as terry is and they would write all kinds of disgusting things detestable emails unwanted to me and others but they would also see seed bob thiel and one thing that really annoyed me and let me me let me just tell you that publicly anyway i was an unpaid elder yes an unpaid elder fine i did get sometimes some help from ccog on a regular basis that was true on a monthly basis then when doc buchanan from uh, from panama joined ccog he was a minister he had sadly a car accident which was terrible and then he could no longer he was supposed to serve uh, basically america and canada uh, the english-speaking english-speaking world with those few members that they are but he could not do that so Bob Thiel asked me if I could uh, counsel people for baptism, weddings, whatever. And I said, no problem. I said, I'm already doing that. I'm already doing that. And I need to remind somebody who says, I have no love. I have to say that uh, perhaps I have no love, but I have sacrificed much of my time and efforts to serve CCOG. Even without any incentive from anyone. Because CCOG has no organized congregations anywhere in the United States. Oh no, now they have. Now they have the North America uh, CCOG on Skype, but they can be thankful that they've discovered that and they've organized that because they've learned about Skype through me and the Serbian congregation. Anyway, since I had now uh, something to do, Bob Thiel said, well, you know, it's Oxen who works should be paid and he he asked me so he allotted me 500 euros per month 500 euros per month and that was something that i was making ends meet and yes i'm thankful to him for that because that was at least something that could just keep me going but in the last 10 years i'm not sure i'm not sure how much uh, he sent to africa there are various estimations i'm not going to be including into that, those because terry once said how much is being sent there uh, from the tithes and stuff and he just calculated some things randy calculated some things others calculated i'm not going to be how many but it's certainly a huge amount of money sent to africa it was so abundant so that uh, even a month ago as far as i received a message rats and bought a new car and it was so abundant that uh, obviously kenyan uh, Kenyan false Christians could pay for their elections. Now, in one of these unwanted message from Evans Oching to me, of course, it was always full of all kinds of accusations. And he constantly say, keeps saying, I'm not stupid, I'm not stupid, as if, well, why would you have to, you know, say, and the, he's not stupid, but, you know, in, in the last light, latest one was, how bad am I? Have I ever read... Mr. Armstrong's uh, ambassador, uh, the, the correspondence course, 32 lessons. I was, I was, I was, brethren, I was tempted to write to him, you dumb. I went through 52, in fact, lessons when I was in England back in 2000, uh, back in 1992, when I was just about being called by God because calling to Christian life is calling from God. I went through 52 lessons, not 32, but anyway. But no, I didn't want to respond to him. Uh, but prior to that, me and others uh, received even email from, I received one from that rat in Mulazu that says, I'm warning you. I'm like, who is warning you who tried to kill your, your, your ex-wife? You who tried to kill your brothers with the help of which doctors so in order to get family property, his two brothers, he tried to kill. He went even to Mozambique to look for effective witches. Anyway, but what happened was precipitated things themselves, brethren. I was willing to change. I was willing to endure. Because I've learned through my experience in, the, in Church of God that persecution, maligning, demonizing will be certainly my lot as soon as I leave. 
but I didn't want. I still wanted to give a, a, a chance that Bob Thiel might change his heart and mind, even though I thought it wouldn't happen. And I told very honestly to Terry Randy, uh, Serbian congregation, and uh, to Terry's son as well that it won't happen. And one by one, they were all disappointed. And then it was January of this 2023. I happened to be at the house of one of my listeners when I received an email from Bob Thiel in which he told me that I should be careful about my attitude about Africa. Could you believe that? I should be careful about my attitude about Africa. By that time, he had proofs of Kenyan elections. He had proofs of, uh, he had information at least, the Malavian government was investigating Rats and Mulozova. He had even a photo of Rats and Mulozova with his supposed cousin. Recently, that photo showed up on the band and everything else. And then, with all that information, all of that, he's writing to me, brethren, a faithful elder who was always obedient to God, risking my own health when I went to Africa, risking my own, like, oh, after all, leaving all behind when I went to Australia. And it doesn't matter. I'm willing to do that, brethren, because that's that's job of an elder. But when there is a purpose, not, you know, why should I go to Africa, to Malawi again, when I was accused, petty accused by half-literate person, disgusting person, who enjoys reputation that he brings all those witches by night to his home that nobody would see, but he, all the area of another Hiva where he lives knows that he brings them at home. In fact, there is a witness that one of the one of the he was a he was one of those servants at his farm. He confronted him about those witches, and he was dismissed very quickly. Why would people lie? Why would they lie about certain things? They could, but why would they? Anyway, when I was at the home of that member, I think it was Friday night. Yes, I think it was Friday night when I wrote. I just couldn't sleep and I just sat and I just wrote a huge email. Now I said to him, you're going to know my attitude about Africa. And then I listed all of those abuses from Africa. And among other things, I listed election stuff. And I mentioned also Malavian investigation events against Rats and Molozova. And I said to Bob Thiel, I could not believe that you would not believe a wife. Why would a wife in Africa, <laughs> in conservative Africa, lie about somebody abusing her? Why would children, why would children lie about it, I said. I can't believe. Is that the government of God? Is that Philadelphian government of God? Not to trust children and women. I can't believe that. Meanwhile, we learned that Priscilla, the ex-wife, Priscilla was a deaconess. So when her, when her Sunday-keeping husband saw how many Church of God CCOG people were coming coming in, he could see it's very lucrative business. So he kind of got interested in CCOG. And then he was <laughs> he was ordained by Evan Soching, or well, perfect, perfect match, right? By Evan Soching, who is more a businessman. People say than a uh, than a, a, a Christian. I would rather say more of a politician, shrewd politician, than a Christian. So why would children lie? Which child would would come to lie? And I said Malavian investigation. I mentioned to him also that CCOG was not even registered in Malawi, brethren. We know that. How do we know that? Because because Malavian government trusts us. And because there is a wonderful man in Malavian government who has the, that, that famous driver who drove, who was just making some extra money and thanks to God that that happened. Who revealed to Terry all these manipulations and misuse of funds and stuff. Abuse of women. Because what he does is abuse of women, and it's 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 criminal criminal act according to the according to the law of law of Malawi. 
what a wonderful to know that you know adultery could be treated as criminal act it's not the case in serbia it's not the case in europe it's not the case in much of the world but i'm glad it's the case in malawi because that's according to god's law just as much as i was reading the laws of various arab countries because when when i went to australia i had to go through qatar when i was reading about their laws i was i was thrilled much of them brethren is is in line with the bible morality and you understand why when there is no vision it says in the bible meaning prophetic vision people get unbridled if you let people do everything that everything wants to do what you have a chaos forget about democracy anyway so I wrote a very long, long, long email in which I said CCOG is not registered. But how do we know that? Because by that time, Terry was already accused of spreading the rumors, tail bearings, gossiper. It was he because he was the one the most vociferous about African lawlessness. And I thought, well, now I'll just join him. And I told him, Terry, I said, I'm going to join you. Now I'll be also... Uh, I'll be probably accused with the same, but fine. It was a long, long, long email to which I never got response. But brethren, use your some common sense. On 9th of March, the first country in the world, and 9th of March will be our, uh, it will be, it'll be the, the, the date we'll use to celebrate Hope of Israel being born. 9th of March, Hope of Israel was registered in Malawi. With a flattering comment! These are true Christians. I've never heard. I don't care about any 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 other certificates, uh, awards, you name it, brethren. It's nothing more important to me than to hear that we, Hope of Israel members, are true Christians. Later on, the government, the men who works for government, who has helped us so much, Explained to me that if the government doesn't have any trust in somebody, that one will not be will not be registered. In my long, huge letter, I made all kinds of things that I learned from Terry. I just told Bob Thiel straight into his face all of that. No response whatsoever. But let me just tell you about not being registered. How do we know? Well, how will we not know? We are in touch with the Malavian government. On 9th of March of this year, we, became, we were registered. The first country that registered us was Malawi. Thanks God. With his flattering comments. We are now in the process of being registered in other countries. But please, brethren, use common sense. If somebody tells you, and I told him, and Terry told him, and, other, that, and, and, and Andre told him, the, gov the, 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 the CCOG is not registered in Malawi, that then common sense would tell you, how would those people know that? Well, we know that because we're in touch with the government of Malawi. <laughs> you know? You know? We ask even the government official, could you please check once again the book of uh, businesses, whatever it is, how it is, however it's called. Later on, we even made it available on the internet so people can check it. No, it's not there. So if we are close to the government of Malawi so that we got registered, if we are close so much that the government is of help to us. I almost cried when I read the first bulletin newsletter that came from Malawi. Malawi, hope of Israel. There was a tornado of some kind there. And thanks to this government official who quickly reacted and all of those former now CCOG members who are now hope of Israel members, we just rushed to rescue, to rescue and help people suffering from tornado that's the example we want to give that's what true Christianity is all about and that's because the government of Malawi trusts us and believe that we are true Christians fine in fact we hope that when Terry goes back to Africa we hope that he'll have audience even with the government officials. And I just told him, please go and just tell them, vindicate all of us, tell them we did not know, 
what those CCOG representatives were doing in Malawi. But now we know. And I'm basically the only elder that whom Terry appealed who positively responded. Meanwhile, from the top men of the of, of, of the CCOG, we, 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 we kept receiving ludicrous comments. Absolutely ludicrous comments, and then we were accused of being tail bearers, uh, all, the, all of that, others. Tail bearers, gossipers, whatever. Oh, and yes, he knows that CCOG is registered. No, you don't. You don't, because whatever happens on the soil of Malawi related to the Church of God, rest assured, the rest of the world that we in Hope of Israel will know because we are friends with the government of Malawi and government of Malawi trusts us and consults with us and asks us for our opinion and what our experience is. And we don't lie to the government of Malawi and the government of Malawi doesn't lie to us. So much for Romans 13 because when there were some elections for the Senate several months ago in, in the States, in the letter of the brethren it was said that Yes, some of you, many of you would support Donald Trump, but, you know, rather you should pray for God's will and remember Romans 13. Right. Why, wonderful. Here it is. Boomerang comes back to you, CCOG. Because the government of a country tells us that you are not registered. So if the government lies to me and to us, then I'm lying now to you. It's not registered. And rest assured, something else. Whatever will be in relation to Church of God, the government of Malawi will certainly consult with us because they trust us. And because we have shown them in words and in action that we are, to quote the government of Malawi, true Christians. The best recognition I've ever heard in my life. The best recognition I've ever heard. The most precious one. We are not, you know, somebody says we're not Philadelphia and Rama. Fine. We at least respect Romans 13. And have a praise. And it says in Romans 13, all oh, those of you who don't know, go and see it. Go and see there. That the government is there to praise those who do good. Good. And you know, funny point. We started the radio, Hope of Israel Radio. Oh yes, the the the, the, the uh, what happened was Terry added something in our registration. Hope of Israel worldwide, just like the radio, but he he added worldwide Church of God. And I thought genius. And I rushed to the Serbian congregation and said, "Look, we are continuation indeed. That's what we want to be of all the positive things from the worldwide Church of God when it comes to doctrines, when it comes to teachings, when it comes to the positive." and true Philadelphian government. And the congregation rejoiced. Brennan, this is important because I think in 2000, was it 13 or whenever, the name Worldwide Church of God disappeared. God through us revived it. But why did we have the name F Hope of Israel? Because that's the most important doctrine in the Bible. Unless we understand it, we cannot understand the whole Bible. So yes, Worldwide Church of God he is revived, not in any bad way, but in a very good way. And any ministerial abuse, I do want to apologize. I apologized when I was in Australia already in public, when I was with various church groups that uh, my friends, and I'm thankful to the CCOG still members in Australia who went with me to that barbecue we were invited. First of all, I went to meet my friend Craig White. Craig White was so impressed with me and us, and he said, why don't you come for a barbecue? On the night, last day of uh, 11, or oh, the last day of the last great day, there will be a barbecue. There will be people of all kinds of groups. Why don't you come? And how many? Five of us. Was it five of us? Five of us. Well, no, five or four of us went. Four of us, I think, went. People were amazed. They were amazed because they never heard of CCOG. But they were amazed that there were four unknown guys who showed up. And the young lady came to me and said, Oh, there are four guys that came, you know, and one of them is a minister. She was so excited that there was a minister. How terrible that is. That there was a minister that came to people who were despised and, and, and written off by all these hierarchical and very often abusive 
governments. And I said to her, I'm that minister. And then I said, brethren, I apologize to all of you on behalf of small persecuted church that ever existed. Since Jesus Christ says, I'll build my church. I apologize to you, even though I was not part of that hierarchy of WCG when it was in Herbert Armstrong time. But I realize that many ministers have done various abuses. I cannot rectify them all. But I certainly apologize on their behalf because they will not apologize to you. But I apologize to you. And later I said, when I had a recording, I apologized again. And I said, uh, but brethren, one thing, please do not forget. Our calling was from God. We we're called to do a certain job. We still have the job to be done before Christ comes. In the meantime, may it be known to the world that hope of Israel has a full trust of a Malavian government. And that's how we know that CCOG is not registered in Malawi. Somebody with common sense would conclude that very quickly, but obviously there's no common sense. We're in the process. Oh, yes, there was also another accusation. One official of Hope of Israel, that would be me, that's directly from Bob Thiel, uh, or Hope of Israel said that um, whole countries left CCOG in Africa. That's not true. And he's sadly, so to speak, lies to the lies to the brethren. Brethren, he has forgotten that there was a small, there is a small congregation in Tanzania. And only when they left, I realized how abused and misused they were by the one who was supposed to be their mentor and teacher, Evan Soching. The funniest part was <laughs> when he tried to convince people that. He prayed and fasted supposedly for a dead person and that person came back to life. I just, if that's true, brother, because you never know when it comes to Africa, other than the Malawian government, you never really know what is true there. Uh, I, I just I just thought I would just faint. I just thought I would just roll on the floor, roll of, uh, remember, roll of, uh, roll on the floor laughing. I just, just imagine. Of course, they were told prior to that how they're not growing, how they're not really uh, contributing much anyway. So the whole Tanzania, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I, I'm informed, whole Tanzania left. That's one country. In Malawi, where we were registered, the first country we were registered, I'm proud to say that. And as much as I would, and I could, I would just find a way, hopefully, to think government of Malawi in some in some possibly practical way. I don't know how because we're just a very small organization with poor people, but still, we do have hearts and we're hope of Israel. So, in Malawi, basically, all of them left CCOG and Rats and Mulozova. And there is a pending, by the way, by the way, there's a pending case against that criminal. And how interesting enough, uh, just about, uh, <laughs> just about a month before those who are in association with him were arrested for human harvesting human organs. Oh, of course, that was always dismissed by Bob Till. No, those are people who are just former former members. They were dis you know they were just former members. And they were just well, they might be former members, but they're in relation with CCOG because the local press, as far as I saw, mentioned one Ratson, and they're not million Ratsons in Malawi. But fine, let let them all live in their in their in their La La Land. Just about a month before I heard that Ratson bought a new car. Oh, well, even better car. Because, you know, when you have a nice car in a poor country and uh, uh, he received how many thousands? I, I was I was informed about how many thousands of dollars he received. He, he publicly uh, boasted about it so that, you know, he would probably bribe some people. You know how he bribed various members in Malawi? by giving them motorbikes. Now, those of you who live in the West may think, what in the world is motorbikes? Brethren, uh, infrastructure in Africa is not very, very developed. In countries like Kenya, when there is potable water is, is, is lacking, uh, the government sometimes makes certain spots with huge 
uh, how can I call it, huge cistern container with potable water. So then you have to take whatever you have to get to that to that water supply place. You know, have that water, then you have to drag it back home. It's not, no, it's of course much better when you have a motorbike. So various motorbikes, about five or six, were in circulation when uh, Terry informed me about that. Various motorbikes that were used to bribe people. Of course, there is a there is a cash there is a cash manipulation. Malavian government has got all the information and all the evidence about that. And then recently, so sometimes a month, this one he gets a new car. Oh yes, why did I? Yes, I, I told you why did I cannot consider Bob Thiel my friend anymore? Well, I cannot because in one of his disgusting, detestable letter, Evans Oching wrote that um, uh, I'm only I'm only good for one thing. I'm only here good. I'm only good to uh, make division among the brethren. And he said that I need a lot of money, and I'm I'm doing all of this for money. I'm doing this all for money. Could you believe that? I'm doing all that for money, and he CC, CCC carbon copied Bob Thiel into that. So all those detestable comments were read by somebody who sent me monthly 500 euros, which I used for all of our needs here, for the needs of the whole Serbian congregation, by the way. All who just had any needs, I would just, I would, I didn't keep it all for myself. So he sent me 500 euros for my serving, you know, serving okay to. Uh, English-speaking world. In the meantime, how much how much money went there for the uh, how much money went there for building churches in Africa? And then when we left, there was an announcement, you know, by Bob Thiel. He says, uh, "Oh well, wonderful. We have now freed enough funds. Could you believe that? We freed enough funds for him to go and pay for the uh, access to the American radio." Well, just give me a break. If he didn't build all those churches in Africa and stuff, he would have had enough money anyway. Building churches, he doesn't understand the gentle mindset. Building churches is another way that you can manipulate with people. How? Well, how? Well, let me say how. Well, let's see. Oh, let's let's try to now use financially. Yes, let's try to use. Uh, 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 I don't know, Baptist Church, say Baptist Church. Oh, let's just contact them and say we're just all interested in Baptist doctrines. And we will just have one table, we'll just have a one plate, we'll put on the church, Baptist Church. We'll just photo that and send it to them and they'll just fold for it, they'll just send us some money. But once, when, when, when we, once we're caught in lies, whatever, we can just contact Mormon church, whichever church, church hopping is nothing unusual in, in Kenya. For those of you who are not informed, well, it's not a rumor and uh, very so fine. Soon, one day, we'll just have to face the truth and ask each other who spread rumors and who is tailbearer. Anyway, but, um, you know, as one of our members in Serbia said, oh, one building and several plates plates <laughs> ready ready you know in store you know one would be uh church of god of california the other plate would say mormon church of god and so on so they can just just change the plates because they have the church buildings they don't need church buildings anymore they've used they've used the sucker sucker for california to do it and now they can just uh, milk money from other churches how convenient how beautiful but no bob till doesn't doesn't realize that he trusts them anything he, they tell him they tell him now the main thing topic now is how many people in kenya are returning or anywhere else and i'm supposed to lie tanzania left we're in the process of being registered in mozambique how well because there are so many former ccog members we are also malawi as i said malawi has registered us already Malavian government, we, we just uh, have this wonderful official, government official, and we ask him to just, in our absence, to just manage all the things in Malawi and oversee things and see that everything is done decently and according to the Malavian law. So we're very good citizens, according to Romans 13. So there are only the three countries. When I said that the entire country is left, I was right. Shall I mention Europe? Shall I mention Europe? 
all the members that we had, baptized members, have left. All of them in Serbia. And it's so funny, but people think that they're just my puppets, you know. And the Serbian members don't even don't even come to be crying. Oh, did somebody is me? No, it just just you know it just happens, and then they come and they say, oh, you know, such and such contacted me. And this is what I responded. The responses are very mature, very mature, and very much are very proud of Serbian members. They've grown up with the work of the Holy Spirit to be mature, to be self-sufficient, if you wish. That's what we want to make in Africa, all of our members, self-sufficient. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't not depend on anybody else. And uh, I mentioned only three countries. Isn't that enough? Three countries in Africa that left. Here is one. The whole congregation, the only organized congregation in CCOG basically left. It's their own personal choice. But people think, I obviously, that I have some uh, mighty methods or power over people. I don't. I'm just, yes, the government of God works. It's from the top down, but I don't think it's the government of God when you ignore one family that almost goes bankrupt and homeless in Australia so that, you know, and that, and that you sent... Whatever others, whatever somebody in Africa says, we need this, we need that. Whatever. Oh, feast, feast of tabernacles, was already wonderful opportunity to grab some money. They just love the feast of tabernacles. And speaking of Kenya, let me tell you something else. Just to illustrate how the government of God works. All of a sudden, we had like 27 congregations and uh, local leaders who rushed all of a sudden to express their loyalty to the hope of Israel, to show how they're just dying to be part of the hope of Israel. But no, friends, listen to me, all of you people around the world. We are not suckers. We're not white angels, as we're called in Africa, by the way. And we're not stupid muzungus that somebody can fool. Thanks to the Eternal, God has provided hope of Israel, a man of a very good, wonderful experience, Terry Nelson. Terry Nelson was, among things, accused in our former uh, affiliation, CCOG, that he's doing investigation. How does he do that? How dares he do that? He told, you know, the overseer told him not to do it. Wait a second. Does it say in Corinthians, sorry, in Thessalonians, check all things, prove all things, and keep that which is good? I think I've read it somewhere in the Bible. So who, who has the right to tell a man not to check things, especially the man who went to that Africa with a goal, with a goal to preach the gospel and spread the gospel and be uh, and be a helper? And what he finds that nobody tithes. Oh, it's now being tithed. Tithes is now being in Malawi. People are now happy because now they can know. They know how they'll pay for the fees, how they'll pay this and that. Of course. Did you know all of the tithe payers that there was no nobody paid a tithe in, in that same Kenya? But there was enough money for the elections, really. There was enough money to pay witch doctors, enough money to sacrifice your own blood as Rats and Mulozova did, according to the witnesses. We have witnesses, we have papers, we have even government evidence in Malawi for various misdeeds. And yes, we respect Romans 13. For those of you who don't know what is in Romans 13, go and read it. I'm not going to quote any scripture. I'm telling you everything, all of this from the heart. And yes, it's going to be long. It is long. It should be long. Because you should hear, if you want the truth, if you want to at least, or if you don't consider this to be truth, but at least if you want to hear the hope of Israel side, here it is. And again, it wasn't Randy Fries who convinced me about anything. Randy Fries, five years ago, opened up, uh, asked, asked me for something. How can we uh, contribute to the work? And he opened up the radio. The radio which works for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A radio that has reached areas that I don't recall that any church of God has reached. You know how exciting it is when you hear that somebody in the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik, listens to your radio. Someone in capital of T of capital of Albania, people in capital of Slovenia. Look, we live in this South Slavic area. Slovenia is part of that. We never we never managed. We never succeeded to reach Slovenia. But the radio, well, hope of Israel is there all the time. 
for weeks Sierra Leone was the uh, one of the country where the, there were the greatest number of listeners Philadelphia era with Mr. Armstrong started with radio I think it will end up with radio as well but no we're not Philadelphians we cannot be possibly Philadelphians you know fine it doesn't matter we'll let God decide whether we are Philadelphians or not and then sometimes you know before then all of a sudden Bob Till says how Terry Nelson went to band and stuff to that site I said I know you don't like that but I said I did not stop Terry Nelson I'm not I'm not a dictator to stop people to what to do Terry Nelson felt that he was censored in CCOG Terry Nelson felt completely rejected he said to me look the Bible says go to the to the brother if he doesn't listen to you go to the church he says I cannot go to the church because I've been banned on the on their electronic forum so now what can I do I can just use ban I said as you wish perhaps it's not the smartest idea but I'm not the one to tell people what to do something and uh, and Bob Till tell, said oh they came on band and then there was this terrible terrible attack and, and then he writes to me he says why did I said look I explained to him I'm not the dictator and I said if Terry felt if it's his conscience that's fine I'm not Oh, but banned. I said, I know, I know. I said, I know there might be plenty of lies there, but there might be some truth as well about some of those things. I know it's a very, it's not, it's really a very bad site. It's bad with all the information it does, does spread, but some of that might be true anyway. We never know. And then he says, but there is an insinuation that I'm under the witch, cast, spell, whatever. He obviously thought I would say, no, Bob, you're not. Well, I said, well, I said, uh, to be honest with you, that's a very, uh, how did I say the word? I can't remember the exact word, but I said that's a very realistic. Considering all of this, your reactions and stuff, it's very realistic. He was terribly offended by that. Then for weeks, he was harping about, in the letter of the brethren, he was harping about witch doctors and all of that stuff and not being, you know, how Christian cannot be affected by witch doctors and uh, true Christians cannot believe in witch doctors to which his disgusting minion, Emma Soching, in his latest unwanted, undesired email, wrote to me, witch doctors, well, how can you be a Christian and believe in witch doctors? Listen to you, all of you, all of you people around the world, especially you who don't believe that the witch doctors exist and they can do not do anything. Listen to me. There is another There is another world we don't see. Mr. Armstrong explained it well in The Mystery of the Ages. It is the world of demons. There are people in this world who are humans who manipulate with demons and demons will very happily obey them because because Satan uses those peoples. Are we clear about that? Yes, we are. All right. Now, you cannot tell me. You cannot tell me based on the Bible. Because Bob Till came up with the whole doctrine, you know, about witches and stuff. And he was, he was so offended with that. He was so offended. That he, he just publicly proclaimed there are people who think I'm, I'm bewitched. Well, no, I can reach, rest assure you, you're, I'm well and you're well. Well, I'm not sure if you're well anymore. Because, and yeah, yeah. And we're accused of not having Philadelphian government. Uh, before witches, let me just finish with this with Kenya. We had these 27 congregations rushing to tell us how they are just into. We didn't believe them, of course we didn't. We had a very rich experience with Kenya. But we just let them have a testing period. In the meantime, I had a friend of mine, the one who told me about the elections 2000 and, uh, 2017, uh, a lovely man who he sowed his own garden, to resolve the hunger issue he has about six people in his home home fellowship uh, he never asked for money he did ask me if I could help with seeds he is some seeds he couldn't find on the market I think but that's another story that's okay with seeds yes because seeds I think tomato or something else seeds anyway but uh, in the meantime Terry was there and uh, in uh, in touch with with Kenya so he just kept he just kept following, following very well, very well, very, 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 very much. He kept their be behavior, and of course, he caught them already. He didn't, didn't, he didn't, didn't take too much to catch them in lies. W one thing that you know, uh, Israelite mind cannot get is that uh, uh, any gentle society uh, is full of various actors, and uh, people can lie for their gain, and they don't care about whether it will harm anybody. But anyway, 
he called them in lies so we just let them for, for a few while and then we just withdrew from them oh to their to their 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 there their, was an outcry how what can they do now they've left supposedly ccog but they they've left it but they have that some of that have returned of course so that was the main news you know those who returned yes because this evil evil hope of israel you know obviously has done something to seduce them so now they've been yes of course they've they've returned you suckers sorry to say that because they returned because they could not they could not do with us what they did with ccog they could not come to us because they thought they would impress us with numbers oh there are only 27 congregations i don't know how many people are there no we're not impressed with numbers we're impressed with honesty uh and we were very very underwhelmed by this honesty so we just left all 27 but i had this one person lovely person in, in 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 charge he is a member of a family that first got converted in 1983 in kenya uh, during the time of mr uh, well sometime during when mr armstrong was still alive and anyway he has uh, he's a very decent fellow nice fellow and i said to him don't worry i said i won't mix you with these other guys because these other guys just speak evil to you they're just afraid of you of course they're afraid because why are they afraid because he knows them all brethren he knows them all and they cannot fool him he knows their characters. He knows how scammers they can be. He knows that they go to, he told me, they go to cafe bar, cafe bar, and then they would just re research on the internet all these various churches. Then they would just contact them, present to them um, how they're interested in their doctrine, trying actually to get their money. And anyway, I said to these guys, I said, I won't mix you with them, but just consider yourself, if you, if you really want to be part of Hope of Israel, you can consider yourself really to be a part of the god of israel i mean uh, uh hope of israel uh worldwide church of god i said but uh, don't mix with them because they obviously are afraid of you and they're by the way we're just testing them we caught them in lies and all the all the evidence you can hear from terry nelson because he's in charge of africa i put him in charge of africa in hope of israel so much for not having not having the government of god in uh, in, in, in and i by, by the way during the pentecost i ordained a couple of deacons in serbia so to help me with the growing work and the growing work is not with num numbers again but it is with various uh, coordination with, uh, with 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 what we preach and what we do we hope to start we are working on the radio in spanish we hope to start radio in italian and hopefully one day when possible we'll do it in french as well but no we're not possibly philadelphian remnant you know there is it's only reserved for one exclusive people a band of people who are just uh, whose tithes uh, are going only to Africa to be financing a building on African churches, even though Mr. Armstrong would be turning in grave if he heard this because he was always against that. But anyway, uh, witches, yes. Oh, Bob Till was terribly offended, and there was a sermon about witchcraft. There was his, there was his, and he protested even to me, How can I even think about it? Well, I said, I do think because those powers are real and they can affect. Oh, no they cannot affect so here comes another set of accusations and he is disgusting he's disgusting evangelist he's half literate evangelist who by the way doesn't know how to close mouth when he eats uh, and uh, among things you know I spent enough time with him and you, you, I just I would just hear when he his imperative voice when he calls wait waitresses and waiters you know and I thought he you know it's he, he just behaves so it is so carnal it's just like one of those big bosses you know who are just have might and power so they just they snap their fingers and you know the uh, waitress is, is supposed to be there in a matter of moment or whatever anyway uh, uh he said to me oh how could i believe in, in in witchcraft and what kind of christian i am and what about my conversion i'm like thinking i'm not going to respond to you because they're they're being desperate because their evil empire is being crumbled now you know and they're being desperate because it's a matter of days i hope when when the uh, witch practitioner in Malawi, uh, uh, the one who drives the new car and seduces women, is going to be arrested. So, uh, you know, they're just obviously being very, 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 very nervous. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to respond. I never responded to any of them except to that one in Malawi when he said, I'm warning you, whatever. Uh, my response to him was, get away from me, Satan, and may God of Israel uh, remove you and all the demons you have brought in the church of God. May God of Israel, you know, deal with you. Because, brethren, you remember 
striving for the faith, struggling for the faith once delivered. Yes, that's true. It's written in the Bible. But right after that, the Apostle Jude tells us that there are some people who have crept in our midst unawares. Some people, yes. And you see, some of those people have brought their demons. Had I known, had I known that I was in touch with those people when trying to enter when when i was entering uh continued church of god in 2016 be rest assured i would have never entered into that church and in my long letter i wrote at the end of january to bob till in my long letter i said to him my only connection with africa and with those people there practicing all kinds of things my only connection is you because i with those people don't, don't communicate with them i don't want any communication with them and i don't want anything to do with witchcraft anyway back to the witchcraft so he was now offended that we said that he was under the uh, spell that he might be under the spell and he was just harping about it brethren in the bible we have we have example of saul who was anointed king of israel there was a evil spirit who would come and disturb him to the point that he wanted to kill david and remember what his counselors told him have somebody play harp and then he would be at peace so we have anointed king of israel of whole nation who was affected by them then secondly king david himself anointed king and we know he had the holy spirit right right and we know that he'll be in the world tomorrow ruling over restored israel right right and by the way uh, of all of these people all of these churches in the because body of christ is spiritual body spiritual organism uh, i don't know if any other organization has a doctrine which says second exodus second exodus is a very important doctrine it's present in the bible hope of israel does understand it hope of israel teaches it and it's part of our statement of beliefs anyway king david king david was forced if you wish or persuaded or suggested whatever you, however you want to put it by the evil spirit spirit to make census of israel and you do go and check in your bible what were the consequences of that census the lord didn't want it but the evil spirit persuaded david king david to do it and finally i remember today does an apostle paul say some somewhere somewhere certainly in corinthians doesn't he tell them that uh, god told him you have got enough of my favor there was only one thing one evil thing thorn in the flesh most likely something to do with the eyesight because he seems to be having eye problems something to do you know to kind of keep you in line so based on the bible nobody can claim that witches and witchcraft cannot affect true christians yes it can especially those who don't even believe that those powers have anything to do with us or that they have any uh, or that they may not harm us or touch us in any way well actually we can see from the bible god allows sometimes those evil things those evil spirits to touch his servants so nobody can say nobody can say no authority can say that that's not possible yes it is very possible and i can say we have seen enough in our society how those people who manipulate with evil spirits can send them or command them or mandate them to mess up people's lives we have seen it so many of that those examples because i live in a gentle society don't forget about it and when Teresa Juarez was here among us on our group on Skype, she confirmed all that and she said she even mentioned some of the uh, events in her personal life. So therefore, witchcraft can in fact affect even people of God. I don't want to be associated with witchcraft. The moment I learned, thanks to the Malavian government who actually, uh, among other things, revealed that to Terry, the moment I learned that there were people who were in witchcraft associated with church of god and that those people were leaders i said to myself i'm out of here no and since we were accused who just brought all those things documented well with witnesses oh yes the dismissal was uh, those two witnesses didn't speak the truth you know always so we cannot trust them wait a second the witnesses the two deacons who may not have spoken the truth all right but you've got an ex-wife you've got children and you've got a photo, incriminating photo, 
uh, which of course Ratzel says is his cousin. Well, I don't know how cousins, uh, how cousin, female cousin can lie on somebody's lap and, and, and him holding his hands on her breast. I really wonder what a wonderful cousinly love. I don't know of any culture in the world where cousin love is being expressed that way. I don't really know. So, you know, we're being gaslighted, you know, to use my friend Fred, Fred, Fred's, Fred's words. Fred didn't go to the feast anyway. We heard who knows what was there, but thankfully he came in touch with me and asked me about things and I sent him. I've written about 30 pages of all of my various, various uh, 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 things that I noticed, things that I heard of the most various problems that CCOG does have. But the worst problem that we learned after we left is the pride. That pride, the Serbian members just told me, let me quote them, you said that Bob Till was such a was such a humble man. What is this? I said he was. The one Bob Till that I knew back in 2016 really appeared as a humble man, uh, really was an easy person to work with, uh, was kind of open to suggestions and stuff. That's the Bob Till that I remember. At first, the one when I first met him, I said, what happened in the meantime? I don't really know. We can only speculate that in the meantime, well, in the meantime, I said he has dismissed all of us, his friends. All of us who warned him about African abuses were not his enemies, were his friends, brethren. His friends in service to him and CCOG, but primarily to God of Israel and to the gospel. So he dismissed all of us, his friends, accused us of being talebearers, uh, even though we had documents, even though we had witnesses. We were just, you know, uh, dismissed as spreading the, 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 the gossip, rumors, whatever. And he just has an unwavering trust in whatever comes from Africa. So if, I guess if they come one of these days and tell there are 20,000 CCOG members in Africa, oh, there will be. Oh, Kenya, that's right. The man who was reserved as soon as we prove these other, <sighs> prove them to be exactly of the same character like, like, the one we witness in CCOG, we just dismissed them. And I have, let it be known to the world, I have, of course, promoted and uh, and uh, promoted, of course, with, first I consulted with Terry as well, I promoted this man that we have, who was since a child was part of WCG, promoted him now to be our, indeed, our representative in Kenya. And I'm so happy that he is. And he'll be wonderful because I'm thinking he'll be a wonderful barrier to all of those who know him because he knows their characters. He knows how scammers and what kind of methods they use to scam. He knows. That's why they're afraid of him. I'm thinking he'll be, I think he'll be a wonderful barrier so that uh, uh, we, can, we can at least secure that without our knowledge, some of those evil people may not creep in among us. And uh, I've appointed him, our representative in Kenya. And all the decisions I have, I've appointed there. Just like that, 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 that friend of mine, uh, that family in Australia that almost went bankrupt and homeless. We have a treasurer. I've appointed a treasurer, by the way. Did you believe that CCOG does not have treasurer? No. It's only one man deciding everything and anything, besides being the main arbiter for the... Uh, the main arbiter for the um, who is Philadelphia and who is not. So I said to the treasurer, Sorry. I said to the treasurer uh, that uh, you know all the little money we have, we don't really have much money. All the little money we have has to be directed to Australia to, to rescue a family. The fact that somebody lives in Australia doesn't mean that he cannot fall into troubles. In hope of Israel, we are having family relations and whoever falls into troubles. And I said to the people in, in Serbia, no matter how poor we live, if somebody, it's very easy in this part of the world to lose your job because of religion. I know it's unfathomable to you in the rest of the world, in the free world, but that's very fathom, fathomable here. So if somebody loses his job because of Sabbath or because of holidays or because of one and the other or, or anything else, 
we are here to help and we will just share whatever we have that's the same attitude we have in hope of israel and we'll be sharing everything it doesn't matter who lives in a first world country or second world country recently we have a lady whose husband who is not converted has is leaving her one of her dogs also died one of her best friends thankfully there are a couple of sabbath keepers in that country who just took her in and um, god will certainly bless them uh and but she she's going to become now alone and uh, you know just by herself so uh, i said no problem whatever little money we'll have we'll just rush to help it doesn't matter who lives where and who lives in what system this is a satan's world and i don't want to allow us israelites to suffer anyway i started with uh, my i told you january i wrote that long letter never response then in february i was visiting one prospective member in one part of the country i used the public transportation of course and then there was a gap between my next train and i got stuck in one little town it was already coming it was already coming the 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 the, 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 the sunset friday night but okay what could i do i just sat at the cafe local cafe and i was trying to do something all of a sudden i saw a skype incoming phone call it was bob thiel and uh, i just rejected the call and i just wrote him i'm in a public place i'm uh, you know so i cannot speak okay and then he asked me um would you would i be interested in be involved in the american radios oh well if i was if i was greedy for power and money and fame if i was greedy for that i would have certainly said yes sure but i thought it was mind it was february it was sometimes between yeah it was beginning of february can't remember the exact date but i thought to myself no i said i was i scheduled my my departure and the last day of unleavened bread but i said to god if this is what you want to be earlier fine so be it so I said to Bob Till no, and I said uh, I've been scaling down my CCOG involvement because a week prior to that I basically stopped the uh, stopped the uh, Skype services. I disbanded Skype services and uh, I stopped it because I knew last I better do it now than perhaps than perhaps prolong this agony. Uh, and uh, Bob Till was shocked. What? I said that's what it is plus I said I added something else since I've written to you what I have to rewrite about Africa and there is in Africa somebody who is in hierarchy higher than me I said I I just uh, um, revoke my obedience to him because I don't trust him I don't trust he's right he is uh, he's true Christian I don't trust so because I'm I can no longer be part of the hierarchy basically I'm basically stepping out Oh, he was even more shocked and then he asked me uh, does that mean that you don't want to be involved in radio but you're still a, a CCOG member consider yourself to be a CCOG member that was now that was really a good trick question because obviously by then various rumors you know rumors had the rumor has it yeah rumors probably reached him about uh, about my intense communication intensive with Terry with uh, with 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 andre uh of course also with uh, with by that time randy freeze was already not part of ccog he he left ccog because he could not stand anymore that all the money from the canadian ccog office was going to africa or haiti anyway i thought well god if this is how you want it may be so i said to him no i said i no longer consider myself a member of ccog but if you want me to be involved in radio because you know church of god to my understanding is a spiritual organism that's okay oh if you don't consider yourself a member of ccog that would be a problem i said fine oh then he said i'll just announce this in the announce this in the in the next uh, church of god in the next letter to the brethren without mentioning your name okay so he basically announced that serbian congregation left and that serbian congregation freed funds for his radio involvement i was outraged i was outraged and i was uh, I, I i said it to the serbian congregation you know this is this is terrible now we see 
now we see what kind of opinion we were. We seem to be burdened to the budget. Brethren, I've done my best in those seven years to serve CCOG. Recently, one of our members received a me message from CCOG member how, uh, how Sasha has made mocking posts about CCOG, which is evidence that Sasha has no love. Well, I don't know uh, to you if you are here ever or have anybody else. Uh, Sasha was mocked when he was a child a lot, just like you were when you were, as far as I remember, your te his testimony. Uh, I know what mocking, how harmful it is, and I try never to mock anyone, even if I don't agree with one. Now, if my statements on the band, because, oh yes, Bob Thiel said, oh, it's on the band, I said, fine, I said, Terry Nelson chose it that way, so maybe it, but I said, I'm not here to stop him because I'm not here to dictate people what to do. They'll be all judged for their actions anyway. And uh, that is what I, when I also, he also mentioned this accusation of Terry being bewitched. Well, I said, I think so. I think you behave like one. <laughs> I've seen people being bewitched, brethren, enough in my life, in personal, in personal family elsewhere, brethren, because witchcraft is very present in Gentile world. And don't fool yourself once again that no, it doesn't exist. No, it's just a superstition. No, it cannot affect me because I'm a Christian. It can affect you because the Bible shows that it did affect very important people in the Bible. That's why last Sunday we had a, we had a, a fasting about it because we felt that we are being pressured by the evil spirits or that they're being sent to us probably from Africa. So fine. And in that, uh, and, and a week before that, we received about those two men being 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 arrested for 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 uh, uh, harvesting human 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 uh, human body parts for the sake of witchcraft. And don't tell me that's not real. Don't tell me that doesn't exist. Ask the Malavian government if it doesn't exist. The fact that some things don't exist in your societies does not mean that they doesn't exist somewhere else. As Randy made a wonderful comment, he says, look at it, was it Randy? No, it was Terry. Terry said, look at this. He said, how come? Well, we wonder why all of a sudden certain tornado, this, that, hunger, flood, whatever affects Africa. Look what he's, what they're doing. And rightly said. And as I said to our representative if, if, in, 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 uh, in Kenya, the moment I hear that any of you contacted witch doctors, that moment that person will be out immediately. And I also told him the moment those who do not want to take health, uh, state health insurance, it is possible, will help with little funds that we have, will help that all our families will be insured because there are various parasites, there are various things in Africa that can happen and that hospital bills are horrendous, horrendous. Nobody can pay that. It's horrendous even for the Western standards, not alone, let alone for the African standards. So I've ordered, the government speak of the government, I've ordered that all the church members in Africa will have to be government insured, health insured. And yes, I've told this man, I'm appointing you now, representative of Africa, welcome to the hope of Israel. Now it will be public. It will be public now. Make sure all the people are there insured. Make sure you continue to teach them the doctrine that you know from the little, from the, your small age, when your parents joined. His parents were the first one to join the old worldwide Church of God. And as I was fasting last Sunday, <laughs> I happened to hear a couple of teachings from Mr. Armstrong. And Mr. Armstrong said about in the uh, video, uh, History of the True Church, Mr. Armstrong said, and brethren, the church used to be scattered sometimes. They wouldn't even know for one another. But now it is Worldwide Church of God. And I just jumped in my <laughs> like, there you go. Brethren, the church was fractured, fragmented, often divided because of human, because of human vanity. But now it is again here. It's Worldwide Church of God. Yes, with one prefix, having hope of Israel which is the doctrine that Mr. Armstrong indeed restored in the last century, brethren. And he taught people because we keep this, what makes us different from the rest of Christianity. Well, what makes us because God made the Sabbath covenant with Israel. God gave 
holidays to Israel. God gave all the statutes and laws and, and, and judgments to Israel, of course. The Ten Commandments were given to whom? At Sinai, to Israel. All those who turn to the God of Israel become Israelites. It doesn't matter their race. It doesn't matter their ethnic origin. Some of you were shocked on the group when I explained. Let me explain now for the old, for everybody else. In the Old Testament, there was the temple with a sacrifice that was the precursor, or the um, what was the better word for that, uh, the, 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 the foretaste of the perfect sacrifice to come, Jesus Christ. All the males who wanted to become Israelites had to first go to Mikveh and be immersed. They had to be circumcised and they had to also uh, make sacrifice at the temple. The same was for the females except for the circumcision. Brethren, what's the difference today with our act of baptism? We go and we are immersed. Our hearts, not our flesh anymore, on our foreskins, in our, with us males, our hearts are being circumcised by the very Jesus Christ, whose blood, by the way, cleanses us from all the sins. And we don't need to make sacrifice because the sacrifice is made for us. And people who did that in the Old Testament became automatically Israelites. That was it. They do those things, they just go away, they're Israelites. What's the difference between us? It's all now on a higher plane, of course. It's on a spiritual plane, but it's still there. Our hearts are circumcised. We are circumcised. We are immersed. And perfect sacrifice is already made for us. What in the world can we then be but Israelites? <laughs> have you realized, have you realized, brethren, at our baptism, we become Israelites. The moment we turn to the God of Israel, make covenant with Him through baptism, that moment we, we start living like Israelites. We are what? We Israelites. Mr. Armstrong was, that, that was the main, the main, the main uh, complaint from all of those apostates. Oh, we you know, and we kept the Sabbath because, you know, because it was with Israel. You know, it was made Sabbath with Israel. That's what made us different for Christianity. And we kept also holidays in this because Israel, Israel, and this British Israelitism. It's back, brethren. Worldwide Church of God is back. With my apology to all those who are misused. God given authority to serve you. They have disqualified themselves. So many of them are now apostates. They will never apologize to you, but I apologize on their behalf if that means anything to you. To those of you whose tithes and offerings were being sent to finance, witchcraft, church buildings, an evil personal empire in Africa, I also apologize to all of you. I didn't know that as I was your elder. As soon as I learned it, I decided I will not be part of it. Many of you maligned me, and now there is a CCOG. Now there is this having this picture portraying me as a villain and as a man who has no love. And because I did this, I made mocking statements. What mocking statements? I appealed on band, since all of the, these things came under the band, I appealed to the band site members to keep dignity and not to attack Bob Thiel or his family. But there are comments there. I cannot control what people do as much as I couldn't control of their evil things on CCOG Electronic Forum. I cannot be a policeman who can just stop what people write. Yes, they malign him, and yes, they write mocking posts so that you know, James and you others. They call him Savior of Africa and 100, and 100 Caucasians. <laughs> well... On that post, I could only see perhaps there are not even 100 Caucasians anymore. Or if they see something that is not right, I just write it there. And I confess there, right before everybody else, that I that I have done something that they would not approve of, probably because they hate any organized religion and they hate any Church of God, Church of God kind of heritage. I just confess them that I'm the one who initiated Hope of Israel, Worldwide Church of God, which Terry, Terry would initiated that with me because that's how we were registered in Malawi. Recently in Malawi, a couple of men were arrested. However, brethren, we are waiting for the main one. Uh, what my friend from Gibraltar used to say, the fat lady hasn't sung yet. 
the fat lady is going to sung to sing when Ratzel Mullah is always finally arrested by the Malavian government and as far as I heard there are about four or five he'll be charged on four or five counts and he deserves that all and don't you tell me to be politically correct I'm not going to be politically correct because he misused the car which purchased was purchased and given to him by the overseer he misused the money to seduce women to maltreat his wife once legal wife to uh, 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 deny his children needs those people are worse than unbelievers he says in the Bible and then hopefully perhaps some would finally say and then we're going to face when the Malavian government comes up with all the financial manipulations he has done and everything else then we're going to be faced and see who was a tail bearer who was uh, who was that uh, you know uh, what, what, what even insults me that honorable lady Patricia was referred to by Bob Thiel as female investigator under quotation marks as if that's a, a, a person that does not exist that we Terry, bad Terry, terrible Terry, evil Terry, to quote Evan Soching, evil Terry Nelson, that evil Terry Nelson and I concocted and made up. No, Honorable Lady Patricia, yes, that she does exist. She's still in service to her country. The Malavian president still uses her services. She is in this reshuffled government. She is not in a position, but it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything because all the evidence is there. And that will be a shock, send a shock waves to everybody else. But let me tell you something else, if you, if you will, let me be very honest. And for those of you who believe there is no government of God, you're being scared constantly that there is no government of God in the hope of Israel. Oh, oh, really? And then you're being said that one official said that all countries left CCOG. Oh, oh, it's absolutely, it's absolutely not true. Yes, it's absolutely true, according to what I know. And from one country, I can certainly testify to it's true because hope of Israel is in constant touch, beautiful touch with the government of one nation, African nation called nation of Malawi. And we are informed about anything and everything that might be related to the work of God, to the church of God activities and everything else. And instead of now having, yes, among those of us, those who were supposedly with us, there were spies who were just uh, report to Evans all kinds of things and stuff. Let me just tell you now, now, perf now let me just tell you this uh, and uh, uh, publicly on the record. But before I do this, let me just address my once good friend who came to... Uh, Skype because of me and gathered with other CCOG members because of me because CCOG never practiced any gatherings until I initiated it uh, for the sake of Sabbaths. Well, those three, and I don't love brethren. You know, brethren, I used to have Bible studies at 1 a.m. Serbian time, which would always last until 2 or 3 a.m. Sometimes then later in the chat, I would stay awake 5 or 6 a.m. I denied myself a sleep just to be in service to CCOJ members, just to convey to them the uh, conservative and good doctrine. I even used the, uh, the the scripts from the ambassador college, ambassador classes. They're just beautiful. And I'll use them in the hope of Israel, brethren, because we are just continuation of all the positive things and legacy of, of Worldwide Church of God indeed. So I denied myself sleep. I used to stay until 5, 6 in the morning to listen to what they have to say. I counseled several people for baptism, a couple of people for wedding. And I wedded them over the internet because I couldn't wed them differently. I couldn't come to America, of course. So I just uh, officiated the wedding even over Skype, believe it or not. I did it. I did always all, and I went all my way and was looking always for for um, uh, creative ways to serve God and to serve the brethren. What happened to me one one feast in Serbia? There was a a mad female who just stormed into my room to ask me some straightforward question. Actually, to accuse me that I messed up her romantic relationship with one Serbian church member. 
which was all false accusation. I, I don't think any of you have ever experienced that. I think if 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 I didn't have love, but I just let her. I was even ill. I felt ill that 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 feast. But anyway, I just let her. Middle of the night, holiday. Need for rest and stuff, and I'm hearing a raving. I'm listening to the false accusations against me that I supposedly influenced her at that time. At that time. Uh, fiance or, or, or boyfriend to did I influence him against her father and all of that rubbish somebody would have thrown her out of the room and say go and say go you insane and then you know seek some treatment somebody would have probably done that but no you know I don't have love I, I have no love you know I have no love I've sacrificed all that I could I've tried to I've tried what I have done with Hope of Israel and what I'm trying to do now with Hope of Israel. So to the very straightforward question, the beginning of February of this year, whether I consider myself still a member of CCOG, I said no. And I said that I'm not going to be part of that hierarchy anymore. And I don't trust their hierarchy. I don't trust him. And I don't trust the one who is above me, the hierarchy, so that I can no longer be serving as CCOG. That was it. I went, the, the train came afterwards. It was Friday evening. Serbian congregation was having a Friday evening uh, Bible study. I arrived in the course of the Bible study, and uh, when it was finished, I said, Brethren, I've got something important to tell you, and I've recorded it in Serbian. I've got recordings here in Serbian. Also, uh, I've got recorded from November of the last year one conversation that uh, Terry Nelson and I had related to Africa, because I thought we should just, just record it, just that, to have it just on record, just as a part of our documentation, so that somebody wouldn't say, you're making things up. Of course, there'll be people who say that anyway, but it doesn't matter. There are always people who would just have to malign me, and now I'm having to be demonized because I'm not part of that group anymore, and because I have, I have decried the horrible corruption in Africa, which I cannot support, uh, not only financially, but not even spiritually, and I cannot support to be in touch with those who practice witchcraft and again the government of malawi has got all of those evidence and i'm just waiting for the fat lady to step on the scene and start singing and it'll be once the ratson the the, the the famous pastor of mozambique and malawi once he's arrested in the meantime the lies keep going to you know to to california five cities how everything is Funky Dory, everything is beautiful. May roses are blooming all over the place. Oh, the work is growing. You know, those 27 congregations of Africa that we, from Kenya, that we tested, when I told those people, there are 10,000 people of uh, CCOG members in Africa, everybody was shocked. Where are from? Where from? How come? I said, what in the world? You don't know? Well, that's the, that's the news for, for the whole... That's the news that has been on for, for, for years now. And then I realized, oh, somebody is sending the news but not informing the <laughs> local CCRG members of what he is sending. Why? Well, because they would have seen that's, that's a big lie. So yes, there'll be, and then the big news now is, oh, some people are returning now, you know, from returning from that evil uh, uh, hope of Israel returning to CCOG. Well, of course they're returning. They'll be returning more. Just keep sending more money to them. Oh, don't worry, they'll come in droves and just keep them. Oh, yes, I was going to tell you something else. I was going to tell you that I was contacted by a board of directors in the States who wrote read sometimes that I went to Africa so they wanted my experience because there is uh, one of the big churches of God members in Kenya I won't mention his name because it's not really relevant but he is there and this board of directors in the states who want to root out once and for all these fake churches of God these fake Christians and those who keep keep using uh, western suckers forgive me for saying that to milk money from them If we didn't warn the top hierarchical government in CCOG that that was going on, I would feel guilty. But we warned, presented all the proofs, and we were dismissed. And called talebearers, rumor, 
spread uh, the ones who spread rumors and we were gossipers right fine one day when they see well they'll be faced with the truth they'll have to ask themselves who was a tale bearer anyway in the meantime they're being fed lies yes there are some people who are returning there'll be some probably more who will be returning they're all from kenya welcome welcome and uh, keep them we don't need them we have tested them and we have proven them we have proven them to be wrong to be that they're the man who they chose to be a leader who we accepted to be lying to us we don't want those people have them but in the meantime just so the all of you know all of you would know nobody here needs to be a spy somebody would hear this all of you should know that there is a board of members working particularly in kenya and when they asked me about kenya i was very candid and they thanked me and they said that i could even help them even more now that i could help them even more to root out that cause yesterday or a few days ago however whenever it was i'm very busy so sometimes i don't check my mail for days but yesterday i've learned that that board of that has has already decided to exclude ccog from any ccog elders in africa in kenya or deacons from any activity the reason they explained to me was that uh, bob thiel is considered to be a prophet and he has already he has already said uh, made some false prophecies to be honest with all of you i don't really know uh, as far as I'm concerned, his uh, Bob Thiel's grasp of some uh, historical and uh, biblical things related to biblical prophecies, to me, at least, maybe I'm deceived, to me they seem to be okay. They didn't seem to me to be false. Perhaps he made some false predictions. I've heard that before. I haven't seen them all. I haven't seen any of them, so I won't make any comments. But yes, it was dubious. How could a man... Who is supposed to be in charge of a worldwide work the only philadelphia how could he be blind when presented with all the facts from his trusted friends and i was one of them how could he dismiss it and why is it because of the fake false information about ten thousand supposed members in africa soon there'll be 12 you'll see it soon there'll be a bit more so that's What's wrong with that? What's going on with that? What's wrong with that? What, what's going on? I don't know. He never explained to me. He never responded to one of my, another of my sayings that I've heard. That there are four bottles filled with sand and his pictures being buried in Kenya on one farm. Why would people make up those horrible things? I, I, I really don't know. But those things are not probably made up. They're true. But he never responded to any of my any objections ever made about Africa were met with deaf silence. And then it was met now with open accusations about uh, about us. Then people now believe that some people believe they're the only Philadelphian. One church member told me today that he, he got a message that, oh, uh, what a pity you have left the only Philadelphian remnant in the world. Oh, come on, please. So people are being fed lies. Uh, African CCOG keeps feeding lies, so I no longer call it. I, why do I hear it? I don't know. I don't. I, I try not to follow it, but um, but it comes to my email. Obviously, uh, I'm considered so important to be informed about all the lies being spread about me now. I'm not saying that there are not lies about Bob Dylan being spread on the on the on the internet. That's that's for sure. I know that the band site is not the most ideal place in the world, on the contrary. But still, I have to respect those people. You know, those people were once part of churches of God or the church of God. Who knows what they have experienced? And what we have experienced also, the lack of, the lack of, the lack of humility. And let me just uh, probably finish with that. Church members here in Serbia asked me, this is the humble man. He was, I said. And I warned him, I said, look, your minions are sending us unwanted emails, detestable as far as I'm concerned. And that one in which his minion from Africa accuses me that I'm all about money and money and money. And the only good, I'm the only good to, to sow the discord among the brethren. I said, this is really enough. So no longer do I consider Bob Thiel to be my friend, even that, because he was carbon copied and, uh, you know, at least if he didn't agree or something he could have written he would have written something he didn't 
So my conclusion is he agrees with all of that. If that's what you agree with your with your half literate lying so called evangelist, so be it. Then believe him, believe him until the until the end or whatever. But I said to him one thing I did say to him. I said, Bob, there is only one thing. Before before uh, 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 pride comes before the fall. And sadly, some of the things that I've read, I've read on that band site when people wrote about his his activities in Africa even before, uh, when they read when they wrote about somebody who who committed a crime also, a trusted man in Kenya who committed a crime back how many years years ago. When I read that, and when I read how they write about his pride, about his him being full of himself I cannot really in, in 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 all the honesty from my own experience I cannot say that that's not true so because based on my conscience I can no longer be part and serve God's people as under the umbrella of of the uh, continuing church of God the same night the same Friday night when I told him I'm no longer a CCOG member, I realized that was it. I announced to the Serbian congregation that I was out. Uh, I told them nobody's pressured. You just make your own decisions. And then I announced to all these others uh, around the world, I'm out. Uh, I'm not going to boast about prophetic gift. I don't think I have it. But I do believe one of my good friends has it. And I've detected it already here in the Hope of Israel, but we're not going to boast about that because it's not important for the world. The prophetic gifts are not there that we have to be proving to the world, oh, look, I'm a prophet that God works with us. No, God's prophetic gifts can be given to whomever God wants to give. And that prophetic gift is always to serve God's people. And one thing is for sure, brethren, I've learned it in Ambassador. I've learned some nudges of wisdom which I always convey to all the church members, but I'll convey to you, I'm not the most important one. Uh, uh, the government of God does exist in hope of Israel. The government of God is being family model. We behave like a family, not like a military, military unit. I'm not issuing orders to people. I consult with them. If they even come, like Randy always comes and he surprises me. Oh, I've decided to do this. I said, good, excellent. Uh, or, you know, should we do this and that? Yes or no? I'm not running people's lives, and that's not my my role. My role is to be helper of their joy. Helper of their joy. And uh, that passage in Jeremiah 17, with the hope of Israel, it's a beautiful passage. It's a beautiful passage full of hope, full of life, full of energy. And then it says, those who do stray away from you those who go away from you their names are written on the earth obviously the names of others who do not go from god are written on in heaven waiting for the return of jesus christ because our citizenship as it says in philippians is in heaven where from we're waiting the return of jesus christ when i was a student i asked my other fellow students to write me that verse from philippians in their various languages and i kept it in my in my room just to be reminded of that I certainly don't think that we are the only true church in the world. That's rubbish. We are part of the spiritual organism. That's what the true church has always been, all the time. Mr. Armstrong would be happy if he heard one day when he is in resurrection, we'll tell him something, so we'll see what he will say to us. But now the Worldwide Church of God is back uh, with all the good doctrines, all the good practices. With a hierarchical government being in a family model, being from the top down, with a love for those who are being governed. Our statement of beliefs basically has all the beliefs that any long-time Church of God member would know. With one addition, Second Exodus, which is there in the Bible, but for some reason people don't love to preach much about Israel. We are a worldwide Church of God, yes indeed, but we, have, we are also hope of Israel and we are not ashamed of being Israelites. Am Yisrael high 
is a motto you can hear with some people I've seen it the other day on Facebook and I downloaded it I am not ashamed to be Israelite brethren and Israelites perhaps you didn't know but here on the Balkan Peninsula the Celts whom all of you know are lost Israelites were the early settlers and then the Slavic elements the Slavic people meaning Serbs, Croats, Macedonians, Slovenians uh, came to this Balkan Peninsula and they've populated it and mingled with Israel and the prophecy was fulfilled Israel was going to lose its identity and become you know other nations and be they will become they'll become pagans because the religion in Europe is pagan it's pagan is full of paganism and it's only just has the name has borrowed just the name Christianity and nothing else but that so uh, there is a huge Israelitish element present in the South Slavic people we have the radio working 27 hours even in Serbia now it's called biblical history the first book ever written on the New Testament Passover I wrote it and I thanked I won't say his name publicly he's still in CCOJ uh, but I thank him the person who helped me publish it and uh, it was at the time published at the time where we were already being separated from uh, CCOG obviously I'm having a book on the lost Israelites this anniversary I used in Serbia to preach about the birthright in Israel and I'll soon will have for the first time in the history of Serbia the book on lost Israel their identity and who knows how many people will still wake up to their identity we don't even know how many lost Celts are there in our genetic pool how many of lost Israelites are among our kinsmen we recognize some of them by face features <laughs> believe it or not by their ginger hairs and ginger beards but keep in mind brethren Israel according to the prophecy was to be scattered into all the nations that means there are plenty of Israelites in Africa there is estimated 2 billion even in Asia who knows how many elsewhere and you certainly know those countries when Israelites congregated in large numbers so that they could fulfill the end time prophecies brethren we know that we used to be in continuing Church of God but we could not live with the terrible uh, corruption we discovered people who discovered it and other people looked up to me I was the one who decided that we should go by ourselves that we should establish continuation of all the positive Church of God doctrines and that we should have the name hope of Israel that's the greatest hope of all the nations of all the world indeed that was my initiative I keep leading and I keep consulting with all the friends within about important decisions and when decisions have to be made I make them I make them without any hesitation I make them to the glory of the God of Israel so we did not come out because we hate somebody we feel very sorry that money that God provides is being squandered on people who don't deserve to be mentioned we could only I can only quote them from the epistle of Jude those who crept in unawares we don't want to be in touch with witchcraft and we don't want to be in touch with dishonest people who just we don't even know where did they come from who baptized them what they believe and uh, who just come and just profess their great loyalty to us now now we're here to be helpers of joy of those who really want to serve God or if they want to be just friends and observers fine let them be honest and just like the government of Malawi observed us and came to a very flattering conclusion that we are true Christians what are we whether we allow the Seans, Philadelphians whatever God is there to be judge of that we strive we strive to do or to copy or to well the copy and do at the same time and then adapt to new situations we try to do 
the Philadelphia work, and we're especially thankful that our radio worldwide, the Hope of Israel worldwide, is making inroads in the areas in the, of the world where nobody, where none of us lives, and when Church of God traditionally never made any inroads, either by printed word or by any other means. It's now possible due to internet. And may our fruits be to the honor and glory of God. In the meantime, all the lies, how I don't love, I don't love people, I don't love brethren and all the, the, the horrible things. Fine. Brethren, I knew it would be that way. I've been in the church of God long enough to see how people who don't know all the, all the facts can make wrong conclusions. I've seen enough the abuse that the hierarchy has done. In fact, back in 1995, the Worldwide Church of God hierarchy used the uh, mental frame of the members that top leadership is almost infallible and uh, the God works the top leadership and top leadership is to be obeyed at all cost. Well, that might be true if they're following the truth. If they're not following the truth, certainly not. But many, many members were not able to discern anymore the truth or not. Many members were afraid. I knew to many of you this will be a new experience. To me, it is not. I count in on the fact that we'll be maligned, lied about, and that is happening. But that does not demoralize me at all. Uh, I know that God is the ultimate judge. And I always pray that he will have mercy on me, on anybody else, and that wherever we make mistake, that he will correct us in love and show us where we are erring so that we can rectify ourselves and be different. Unlike our previous association, we do have a treasurer. Uh, we do have all the people involved in our in decision making and imp having all the people are free to give input. Nobody's he's forced. Nobody's bribed by motorbike or money. It happened that we were first registered in Malawi. It just happened like that. God wanted it that way. Why? I don't know, but fine. We're still working on being registered in other countries. And our brotherly hand is extended to all of you before I close just uh, one more thing that I need to tell you probably on the account of how much we don't have Philadelphian government or whatever well you do know that the only church in Revelation brethren that has the key of David is the Philadelphia church a few months ago there was a coronation ceremony of King Charles the third of course I knew what it means and the Serbian members knew what it meant. Thankfully, we found uh, internet link where we could observe the coronation. The first that I said to the Serbian members was, look for the Stone of Destiny, Lea file. <laughs> if you see it there, you'll know it's there. Yeah, it was there, right beneath the uh, coronation chair. Then, during the ceremony, I also said, look for those things mentioned in Genesis, where Tamar was giving birth to uh, Judah's sons, twins. And, yes, all of a sudden you see, here they said, here's a bracelet, here's a ring, and here's a staff, shepherd's staff. Now, King Charles, by the way, is the only king in the world being coronated by being anointed and then if you followed the procedures and listened to what the Anglican priest would say that's quite interesting that's how the Israelite kings were brethren coronated on the Leophile stone that Jeremiah brought from Judah to Israel to the house of Israel on the British Isles there were all the elements that we looked for and I remember I was next to a prospective member, I was at his home in the north of the country and so thrilled and so excited both we were and he said to me at one point, look, he said, if it wasn't for you I would have never knew, I would have never known 
where is the house of David and look he said now and look what's happening now now we are seeing a descendant of David being crowned on the throne of David it's a prospective member he is not baptized brethren but he understood that truth all the church members in Serbia both baptized and unbaptized closely watched the coronation ceremony that's one thing I wanted just to tell you because I know that the only church in Revelation that has the key of David meaning understanding of the identity of Israel and meaning that understanding where the house of David is today are the members of Philadelphian Church I presume that many other members of churches of God around the world watched closely that ceremony they should have but we did we did and secondly the final thing our brotherly arm is open to all of you brethren we were abused lied to some of you maligned but uh, we must not give up because those who endure to the end it's the prophecy will be in the future saved so we'll be saved when Jesus Christ comes we have to endure to the end this is part of the I know it's the hardest probably part when the persecution lies come from within it happened from time to time in Church of God history happened to me at various times I knew to some of you this is not very easy but uh, please endure to the end endure to the end this is part of the learning that we have to go through obviously for some reason for the reason of the world tomorrow and uh, our brotherly arms are open to all people wherever they are on Pentecost I appointed a couple of deacons and I told them clearly your deacons the whole people of God anywhere as deacons thus know that your responsibility is to render any help and service to all the people of God wherever they are we don't think we're the only Church of God we don't think we're the only true Church of God that's stupidity that's stupid to say in this world in this day and age some of us may have prophetic gifts but uh, no none of us is going to proclaim himself a prophet because you know prophecy will come and pass and go and uh, as it says as Paul says in Corinthians first Corinthians 11 but love endures forever knowledge is important but knowledge can puff up people sadly we have seen that recently we can see that as well but love edifies and therefore our brotherly arms are open regardless of how much or little knowledge you may have regardless of wherever you are whoever you are true Christians we are open have open arms for you with you and we want to continue to do to the end the job to which God has called us in this day and age and we know it's Matthew 24 14 we are doing our part already through our radio through the written word as much as we can in Serbian uh, hopefully in other languages over the time the site is on its way so it will be there soon we are doing our part but we know there are other Christians elsewhere doing their parts we appreciate that we love you and we support all those like Christ said whoever is not against us is with us our brother and ours are open and they will stay open and the hope of Israel it has nothing racist in it it's encompassing whole world it's encompassing all the nations all the tribes all the races and that's exactly how God intended it to be so perhaps this was the most difficult speech I had to tell you the most difficult message but I envisioned it as an inaugural message for the hope of Israel hope of Israel worldwide Church of God to announce this news to you that you know I've already done it a little bit ahead of time when I had the interview with Gene Porter my good friend who has been following my service to you for years now and I think I one of his most famous guests at his podcast which is like a 
program. He makes interviews with interesting people. He is absolutely crazy about the two houses, House of Judah and House of Israel, as much as I am. And he always loved to interview me. And in those two hours, he always gives me enough space to say whatever I want to say. Well, not long ago, I decided to use interview with him to also announce to his audience the formation of Hope of Israel Worldwide Church of God and this is the inaugural speech perhaps the most difficult I had to give you because I had to explain to you why you no longer hear the words from me you don't longer hear a name of a certain church of God and no longer do you hear from me mentioning a certain person that used to be my friend however the work is still ahead of us the short time we have we want to make the best out of it our hearts are burning for the kingdom of Israel which is the kingdom of God to come we are being governed and structured in a Philadelphian way that Mr. Armstrong I think would be very happy with but we have a family structure we don't have a commanding structure we don't have a, we have more of a shepherding shepherding uh, uh, result and I don't think that it's that there are people who are not worthy of to be communicated with or that there are people who should be ignored and I don't think the Philadelphia structure the least credit to speak about Philadelphia structure are those who pump money in one part of the world and let you know, yet look or hear or know that somebody else in another part of the world is on the verge of bankruptcy and homelessness I don't think that Philadelphian church Philadelphian uh, rule or Philadelphian mode of governance is to spread lies about us in Serbia who supposedly were burdened to the budget of the church when we were not we lived very modestly, we made the ends meet and we just uh, did what we could. In fact, those who were employed were able to secure enough second tithe so that the last, last piece of tabernacles they kept by themselves with their money that God blessed them with. So we didn't ask any church help for that, even though we had every right to do it, but we didn't because we did not want to use hard-earned money from other members and uh, the point was we're back the worldwide Church of God is back with the most positive traditions and teachings it had those who apostated and destroyed it will be desperate and will be laughing at us but it doesn't bother us the work of God is still ahead of us it's being done already we'll continue with all the doors that God will open before us we'll try to walk through and we continue to work being recognized by one government of a small African nation of Malawi and we continue to work with the most important recognition any group of Christians could have and that is these are true Christians